on Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is viewer-supported Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station, serving Atlanta and all of Georgia. Georgia Public Broadcasting presents the 2006 Georgia High School Association's Football Semifinals. Funding for this program is provided in part by Georgia Electric Membership Corporations. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW Local 613, Atlanta. Wachovia. The Georgia Student Finance Commission. By viewers like you and the Georgia High School Association, who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge dealers, State Farm, and Verizon Wireless for their support of high school sports programming on GPB. Live from the Georgia Dome, it's the double-A semifinal matchup between the Early County Bobcats and Charlton County, 13-0. The winners of this game Plays Dublin for the state championship next week in Class AA. Welcome. This is Game 8 of 10 this weekend in the Georgia Dome. Hello, everybody. This is Tommy Palmer along with Dave Cohen set to bring you the play-by-play -play activity. And we've got us a great football game, a lot of speed and a lot of athletes. And this is a game you're surely going to enjoy. Dave, we're really looking forward to our great game today. Well, we are, Tommy. Once again, great skilled position, and you and I were talking off air. A number of the wide receivers today participating in their school's track teams running a 4-5, 4-6, 40s. We could see a lot of running around today on this field. Could be a long day and a testing day for the corners and the safeties on the defensive side. A lot of speed, a lot of throwing the ball around, and a lot of great running attacks on both sides of the ball. Well, again, very versatile athletes. The quarterbacks both outstanding. You see one right there, Dwight Dasher, over 2,000 yards passing. He's a 5'10 senior and had 25 touchdowns this year. 660 yards rushing, scored 10 touchdowns on the ground. Again, dangerous whether he's passing or whether he's running the football. Also for Charlton County, they've got a very strong running back in Lemuel Walker, 114 carries this year, 742 yards, almost six and a half per carry. He has scored 17 touchdowns. Again, very, very tough back. It's gonna be, could be a long day for the defensive side on the other side today, Tommy. The amazing thing about Charlton County is they're 13 and 0 this year they won the state championship 2004 2005 and they had losses in both those years Dave well again a lot of experience these guys have been here you got a lot of seniors that are going to play today guys that can kind of bring the up the uh, underclassmen along and you just can't say enough about kids that come in that have that kind of experience coming into the Georgia Dome and playing under the pressures that they play under a game like today. Well, Early County's no stranger to the Georgia Dome. They've been here a couple of times as well in the past. Well, Early County, again, a very experienced football team. They come in here with a number of seniors, and one of them is their quarterback, Emmanuel Taylor, right there, number four. Over 2,500 yards passing, 25 touchdowns through the air. Again, very dangerous like Dasher on the ground. Almost 800 yards rushing, 19 touchdowns scored rushing the football this year for uh, Emmanuel Taylor. One of his key uh, passing recipients is going to be John Micah Henderson, over 500 yards receiving. There you see it, 5'10", 28 receptions, almost 18 yards per reception, and six touchdowns. Again, one of his favorite receivers. We could see a lot of action today, Taylor to Henderson in this ballgame. Should be a great one. We asked Coach Trey Wolf of Early County what to expect from the Bobcats. Uh, offensively, we, uh, we run out of the spread, out of the shotgun most of the time. Uh, try to use a lot of different formations and uh, throw the ball around. Not a lot of deep stuff, just uh, short ball control. Uh, try to get a good run, run pass mix and, that, and uh, try to get a good balance in there. Uh, defensively, we, uh, we run out of a full four. Uh, try to stun a good bit, use our team speed defensively, play uh, uh, some man coverage, some zone coverage back there, and uh, try to try to do a great job of hustling to the ball. Let's throw it down to the sidelines for the third member of our team, down close to the action, fast and furious, Lisa Weiss. 
Thanks, Tommy. Well, Charleston County is back at the Dome for the sixth time, and you have to take your hat off to head coach Rich McWhorter. Since he took over in 1990, the Indians have made it to the playoffs every year. They've won 13 region titles and three state titles. Now, the one and only time Early County won a state championship in football was 1964. The head coach was Ray Knight, who just happens to be the current head coach, Trey Wolf's uncle. Now, Trey Wolf was also a player in Early County. Back in 1980, he was a quarterback for the Bobcats when they lost to Woodward Academy in the semi finals. So Tommy, he knows what it's like to be a player and a coach at this type of game. We look forward to a great game. Get set for the kickoff. That's coming up next. Charlton County, Early County, just ahead on GPB. It's the oldest state park system in the country. Some areas are so precious and so fragile that you only use them wisely. And it stretches from Tallulah Gorge and Cloudland Canyon to Fort King George and the Little White House. You could spend weeks and weeks going from state park to state park and you'd see something different in every one. Discover the natural wonders and intriguing history that make up the soul of Georgia. Sights to behold, the history of Georgia's state parks. Sunday at 5 on Georgia Public Broadcasting broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 613 has served Georgia business for 80 years without a work stoppage. Our bonded workers are skilled, drug-free, and get the job done on budget and on time. IBEW is putting families to work in Georgia. This is Celtic Woman, their new show on PBS. Celtic Woman, A New Journey, filmed at Slane Castle in Ireland. Don't miss this spectacular concert. Celtic Woman, A New Journey. Sunday at 8 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Support for today's programming is provided in part by the following. Need a better way to apply to college? Visit gacollege411.org and fly through applications online. Start, stop, save, change information anytime. And it's automatically transferred to all your applications. GA College 411. Helping students plan, apply, and pay for college. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Charlton County and Early County. Charlton County coming into the ballgame. 13 and 0 on the year and man they've been on the road for a long time the captains are going to meet at uh, the middle of the field Dave what do you what do you look for in this football game I, I'm, I'm excited about this football game because it's going to be one of those wide open affairs well Tommy a couple of keys to the game that I've come up with can Charlton County's defense slow down or limit quarterback Emmanuel Taylor of early County also can they limit the touches by wide receiver John Henderson you know the last two weeks the defense has really been strong for Charlton County. They held Buford to seven, held Screven County to six. Now the question for Early County, and we saw this yesterday in our ball game, and they weren't able to do it, but can Early County establish their offense early? Something that uh, in that 2A game yesterday they were not able to do. Dublin defensively was just so strong that Lovett really was never able to get their offense in gear. Early County's going to have to try to do that in this ball game today. Early comes in as the second place team out of region 1AA and their last loss was at Fitzgerald. They changed a couple of positions. They moved the larger defensive ends to the inside. They took the defensive tackles and put them on the outside a little quicker and they're getting a better surge on defense. Here's the state championship matchup next week. You got Dublin beating Dublin, uh, Lovett yesterday 65 to 7 against the winner of Charlton County and Early County. Charlton coming in, as we said, 13 and 0. Early County 11 and 2, losing opening night to Bainbridge and then late in the year to Fitzgerald. Boy, Dublin really flexed those offensive muscles yesterday. And if you didn't see the game, they took advantage of every turnover that uh, unfortunately Lovett uh, was able to was able to come up with and uh, Dublin just looked very strong very strong both through the air but even stronger on the ground just so many offensive weapons for them they used what five or six backs to carry that ball of course Wilcher was the one that had the most speed but uh, just so many options for them well the winner of this game is really going to have their hands full with Dublin next week and I think basically Dublin's going to have their hands full with the winner of this game because 
there is going to just be speed everywhere. Dublin showed us that yesterday, and Charlton and earlier, I'm sure, going to show it to us today. Well, as I said, two outstanding defensive units as well. I want to mention, too, early county, as the graph showed, they're 11 and 2. They beat Calhoun 20 to 3, so they didn't even give up a touchdown, just a field goal. Not only at this stage do you see teams that know how to score, you see teams with outstanding defenses that uh, know how to keep teams out of the end zone. I think the interesting thing about these two football teams is they travel and play well on the road. Charlton last week went 331 miles, beat Buford. Early went 261 miles and beat Calhoun. So they can play on the road. They're both a long way from home. One from extreme southeast Georgia, the other from extreme southwest Georgia. Travel, not problem. These kids are ready to play. Well, they are. And, uh, you know, the adrenaline flowing down in that field right now. You see Early County coming out onto the field. A lot of adrenaline flowing. Everybody, the fans, the players, excited to be here at the Georgia Dome. Early County on the year, 1,718 rushing yards, 33 touchdowns, 2,693 yards, 26 touchdown passes, five defensive touchdowns. This is a quality football team, no doubt. Sure, the key stat, the five defensive touchdowns. It just shows how strong these defensive units are. All right, Charlton County, on the other hand, 2,636 rushing yards, 43 rushing touchdowns. That's almost un unimaginable. But when you put that with 26 passing touchdowns, how do you score 70-something touchdowns in a season? That's you wear, you, unreal. You wear defenses down left and right is what you do, and you're running over people. Seven defensive touchdowns to go with that one. This is going to be a classic, folks. I can just feel this. This one's going to be a great one. Early County, Charlton County. Charlton County on your left in the solid gray with the black and the red. Early County in the solid blue to your right with the gold. Helmets with the EC on the side. Early County kicking right to left in this one. Dave, are you ready? I'm ready, Tommy. We can't wait to see these wide receivers cut it loose. Trent George to kick it off. Driving kick taken at the nine. Ralph Bolden back up the middle. Going to be caught up at about the 26-yard line. Trent George, the kicker, made the stop. Trent George, an outstanding defensive football player as well as the kickoff guy. Well, one thing we didn't mention in the open in the pregame, Tommy, two special teams, special team units for both of these football teams have been outstanding all year, making big plays at key times of the ball game. Not really giving opposing teams much to work with, but now you've got both of them facing off here today, so we'll see which one gives. Dwight Dasher calls the signals. 210 attempts, 120 completions, over 2,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, three wide outs to the left, one single setback, Dasher brings him up. Early jumps up in what looks like a six-man front. Let's look at the three wide receivers. They're going to run it off the right side, break a tackle there, and off and running, Trent George pulls down the running back. Lemuel Walker at midfield. As we said, look for the track meet. And George, the senior linebacker, steps up to stop what could have been a breakaway touchdown he had the uh, on the special teams unit he had a big stop and there he is with a big stop there preventing what again would have been uh, a certain touchdown senior leadership there on the side of early county's defensive unit all right here's charlton now 49 yard line dasher the quarterback three wides to the left Unbalanced line, going to run back to the short side of the field. Good defense, flag down on the play. Fumble as well. Watch out. Let's see what the flag's all about here. Face mask against Early County, the initial call here. We saw it a couple times yesterday. Might have been an inadvertent face mask. Incidental face mask on the defense. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. You tell me you see that sometimes. These guys get mixed up in piles. Your hands, your arms are flying all over the place. You didn't intend to grab the face mask, but just by the way the pile was, you couldn't avoid it. Unique offensive set as Dasher brings him up. Three wides to the left. Tight end side of the field for the right with a single setback. Early in a six-man front. 
Guys are going to run the option, cut inside, and get the first down, down to about the 41-yard line. Over to make the stop for Early County. The entire right side over there. Charlton County's got Thompson, Nettles, Humphreys, Green, and Drury up front. In the backfield, Walker, Ferguson, Donnelly, Milton, Greaves is the tight end. This is a potent lineup. Well, we said a lot of these guys or a number of these wide receivers have uh, also participated on their school's track and field teams and have been running four, five, four, sixes in the 40. So a lot, a lot of speed out there for some of these wideouts. Wide splits, two wides to one side, one wide to the other. Going to run the toss sweep and going to be tripped up at about the 37, fumbled again. A lot of hitting going on out there. You can see the quickness from the get-go here, Dave. Speed on the linebacking court. Early County's got Daniels, Williams, Worlds, and Davis as the down lineman. Cody, Harris, and Williams are your backers. And in that secondary, Davis, Lee, Wimberly, and George. And it was 31, Anthony Williams, that came up out of the linebacker set and made that tackle. All right, second down at about seven and a half now at the 37 and a half. Charlton taking a lot of time back there as Dasher brings him up. Bolden, the single setback. Almost looks like a nine-man front. Dasher fakes, looking, throwing, and incomplete. Down deep in the end zone. Pass was intended for D.J. Donnelly. They will go for the home run ball without, you know, being embarrassed from anywhere on the field. Yeah, you're right about that. A lot of speed that time. The problem, Donnelly just didn't have quite enough speed. Dasher had a little bit too much on that ball, looking to kind of, kind of lead him into the end zone. He had plenty of time to throw. You see him look downfield, trying to go down the right side. And Donnelly just not able to get there in time. Of course, a couple of double coverage there as well for early County. Very good coverage. Four wides to the left, one to the right. Here's where they really split you up. Dasher, a single setback. Going on the draw and going to be short of the first down, down at about the 32 or the 33-yard line. Latavius Davis made the stop for Early County. Had some help in there also from Quintiris Davis. Tommy, I love sets like that. As you said, four to the left, one to the right. Everybody's looking for Dasher to step back and fire that ball. What does he do? Totally takes off. Runs the draw. Rich McWhorter, 189 and 41. Would you say the percentage is pretty good? You think he's going to have contract problems? I don't think so. 822 winning percentage. Fourth and two, and Charlton, of course, going for it here in four-down territory. Dasher, early up from the four-man front. Going to jump up in there. He may be short. It's going to be very close. Early County really asserting themselves on the defensive side of the ball. Walker on the carry. Harris on the stop. Takes the handoff, tries to go in behind the right tackle. Runs right into two or three blue jerseys, gold helmets, and it's going to be awfully close. Boy, see the if they hole bring closed the in a hurry, didn't it? Yep, let's see if it looks like they're going to go ahead and bring the chains out and measure it. Williams really came in there late and kind of spun the back around Lemuel Walker, and that may be the difference between a first down and not. A little short. Early County has held in the early going here. So the Bobcats... Get to do the turnaround. Excellent defensive surge that time. First and 10 early county now as we get to see them in their initial possession up at the 30. And we're going to see another outstanding quarterback in Emmanuel Taylor. Not only can this kid pass the ball over 2,500 yards, but averages a little over five yards a carry when he rushes the ball. As they say in early county, E.T. phone home. Emmanuel Taylor, he's a good one. Taylor dropping the throw, looking, got a man out there, up a little high, down at the 42-yard line, Deonis Bryant, the intended receiver. Excellent coverage by Charlton down there. Excellent coverage, but an excellent throw as well. There you see Emmanuel Taylor. 182 out of 298, 2,600 yards almost, 25 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. That's very efficient. Passing with a lot of accuracy. 
Taylor the single setback, no huddle. Now he's got a half back there, two wides left, two wides right. Taylor going to run the draw and go up to about the 32 of the 33 yard line. Very little there. Caleb Giddens, the big inside linebacker. All right, here's the early offense for you. Trawick, Worlds, Webb, and Wright are your up front men, along with Story, the center. In the backfield, Wimberley, Somerset, Bryant, Stovall, Henderson is your tight end. And right now operating against one of the stingiest defenses. Again, Buford managed just seven points. Strevin County just six the last two weeks. Third down and about nine. Emmanuel Taylor brings him up. Drops, looking to throw. Now going to run. Taylor up across the 35, up close to the 39. Going to be shy of the first down. But you can already see the difference in speed in both of these teams, Dave both sides of the ball. Let's take a look at it. Here comes Taylor. Right up the middle. Everybody covered. Tries to get out of Giddens' way. But the big linebacker stayed home. For a split second, trying to locate any of his receivers downfield. Didn't see anything that made him comfortable putting the ball in the air, so just decided to tuck it and run. Harris to kick it away. Or is that George? Yes, George to kick it away. And Charlton going to take it down at about the 29. D.J. Donnelly took it in and brought it back to the 33-yard line. Let's take a break. There's no score. 8.59 left in the quarter. Funding for this program is provided by the Georgia High School Association. The GHSA would like to thank State Farm for the outstanding support of high school sports programming on GPB. State Farm is proud to be the official awards presenter of the GHSA, recognizing outstanding achievements by Georgia's student athletes in competitive sports and activities. State Farm wants families and teens to always drive safe in your communities as you travel to work, school, or play. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, certainly nothing disappointing about what we've seen early on. It's everything we had expected and certainly a lot more. A lot of speed and athleticism on the field out there today. Two exciting quarterback to watch, too, as we've talked about in Dasher and Taylor. Some outstanding wide receivers looking for this ball game as they get more comfortable, get acclimated to playing here in the Dome. Seeing some, uh, some all wide-out offenses going here and just uh, letting it all hang out. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Holding the single setback, Dasher dropping the throw, pressure, throws, tip to the air. And is it a reception or an interception? Both of them fighting for the ball. Terrence Milton, the intended receiver. Is it a completion? Yes, it is. Well, the thing about it, and we'll see if we see it on the replay right here, he had to wrestle that away from the DB. Nice job, Dasher, under pressure. Let's the ball go. You saw it was partially tipped. And then both of them going for it, the corner. And there's Dasher, by a split second, got his hand on the ball. Otherwise, it was an interception. And on the coverage that time was uh, Quinteris Davis. All right, here's Dasher bringing them up two wides to the right. Tight inside of the field to the left. Going to run the little trap right up across the 41 of the 42 to Ralph Bolden. All right, it's going to be third and about a yard here. Excellent reaction by the defensive back on the left-hand side over there on the uh, aforementioned play. I tell you what, you really have to fight for it out there with these strong defensive backs. Bolden, 43 rushes, 643 yards. He can get it done. Third and a yard. Dasher up under. Going to run the quarterback sneak and got it up around the 45. Interior line stops him there for Early County, but not before the first down. Kind of interesting there as you watch it on the replay. It, it, he just, there was so much room right up the middle. Great job by those interior offensive linemen to open up a hole and give Dasher a clear shot to getting in there and picking up that first down. 
thing I like about it is to watch the offensive center make the only move, and then you get the late move from the offensive line. It's a little awkward to see it because everybody's kind of standing still except the guys right in the middle of the play. Exactly. Shotgun formation, two wides to the left. Tight end side of the field is to the right. Dasher pumps, throws, got a man out there. Covered double coverage again down there. Stride for stride. Down to the 15, Jonathan Ferguson, the intended receiver down there. Man, Dasher is not afraid to air it out. Watch this. I was going to say, neither one of these two quarterbacks we've seen here today shy about putting the ball up. Look at him fire that thing downfield. Nice throw, just a little bit too far down. And again, they're not afraid to throw into double coverage at all. I think that's probably what makes this game so exciting <laughs> is that, you know, we, we can't sit here and say, well, you know, it's third and one and they're going to go for the dive play. They're, they're, I don't know that many of them have dive plays on either one of these teams. All right. Wide receivers left and right. Now a slot going to send a man in motion. Early going to run a stun again. The ball batted away. Pass was intended for D.J. Donnelly. Flagged down on the play. Now, did Early get across too quick? Did somebody move on the Charlton line? Procedure on Charlton County. Early obviously has bought into the fact that you need to blitz. You can see the blitz coming from the far side. Dasher. Dasher, that quick sidestep moved to his left to avoid getting the sack. But the penalty anyway. Five-yard penalty. All right, the clock begins. And Dasher looking to the sideline, getting the signals. Third down and 10. Bolden and Dasher in the backfield. Three wides to the left. Tight inside of the fields to the right. Early with four-man front. Dasher rolling, throwing. Over the head of the intended receiver down at the 39. D.J. Donnelly, the intended receiver down there. And early, early County still in very good coverage back there defensively. Well, they knew that they had to be ready for the onslaught of this passing offense here from Charlton County. Boy, does Dasher's arm look like a slingshot or what? The way he kind of throws that sidearm. He is an amazing thrower. He breaks every rule that every coach tells you about bringing it over the top, and that doesn't happen. He just sort of slings it. He's a, what we would call a gunslinger quarterback. I know, but how do you argue with over 2,000 yards passing? You don't. You don't change that, <laughs> man. That That's in the DNA. You don't change that. Dasher also the punter, averaging 37 yards a kick. Fourth down. Five-yard penalty against Early County. Dasher in semi-punt formation, now dropping into punt formation. Dasher rolling to throw, complete to Donnelly. Down at about the 39-yard line. Well, Tommy, I didn't want to speculate, but you mentioned it. He started inching up closer and closer to the line, then, then he jumped back a three or four steps, and I'm thinking like, ooh, what do we got coming here? And uh, sure enough, there's that slingshot arm. That's a gutsy play that time, and they pick up the first down. There you see it from this camera angle. Look at that bullet thrown right across the field. Nice catch. Perfect throw. Dasher is, of course, Donnelly with 540 yards on 28 receptions. Dasher is waiting until the defense gets set. Then he reads it and checks off and calls the play. Dasher dropping the throw. Wide receivers everywhere. Being chased. Throws. Down at the 28. Jonathan Ferguson, the intended receiver down there, in and out of his hands. Good coverage down there by Early County. Looked like Jarvis Tenson down there. No, that was Sikori Wade. Sikori Wade on the coverage along with Benja Wimberly. Well, we do coming in, too. Maybe the most tested and busiest guys of the day on both sides of the ball defensively were going to be the corners and the safeties. The amazing thing to me is we've played almost eight minutes and there's been no score. Yeah, we thought this might be a high-scoring ball game, but so far, defensively, both sides have really buckled down. 
Dasher, the blitz again. Dasher goes right where the blitz was and breaks it and goes down to the 20 yard line goes Dasher. Quinteris Davis on the stop and where the blitz came from he just sidestepped it and read it. Watch it. Sure good job too. following his blocker. No question about what the play was. He's got a couple of white jerseys there to follow 56 leading the way and a nice pickup. They keep the chains moving and pushing closer and closer to the red zone really at the red zone just outside the 20 yard line. Demetrius Cody made the stop. First down 10, Charlton begrudgingly moving downfield. Four wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Dasher, the quarterback, the single setback. Looking and throwing. And caught down at the 20-yard line. Lemuel Walker on the left-hand side over there. Little or no gain on the play. They do flood a zone, don't they? Yeah, they do. I think they just, uh, like you said, just uh, get back to the line of scrimmage on that. Trying to see if anything was open for Walker after the catch over on the left side. But nothing was there. Early county in pursuit defense. Keying in on Walker, knowing how dangerous he is. Didn't allow him anything after the catch. The first eight minutes or nine minutes of the ball game have been a chess match. The offenses trying to read the defenses. And, of course, Charlton held the ball most of the time. Dasher, three, four wide receivers right. Looking, throwing across the middle. A little bit behind the man, Terrence Milton, who was cutting across the middle on a slant pattern. I tell you what, Dasher can cut it loose. No question, firing bullets all over the place as they're trying to get this thing further into the red zone. And right now, they've got uh, all the wide receivers they need out there. They just need to hit one. Man, do they ever put five wide receivers one side to another side, five up men? It's unusual when they have a single setback, which they do. Lemuel Walker, Dasher and Walker, the setbacks. Dasher. Going to break a tackle, and another Dasher knocked down at the five-yard line. Dasher on the carry. Trent George made the stop down at the five-yard line, and yet another first down. Well, again, great run there by Dasher. He's following his blockers, comes back, looks to the right side of the field, avoids one tackle, avoids that second tackle, and gets to the five-yard line before they're finally able to grab an ankle and keep him out of the end zone. All right, Charlton down there knocking on the door. The White Dasher, 660 yards, 97 rushes. Averages almost seven yards to carry, 10 touchdowns on the year. And in motion, Dasher going to run the option. Fumble, he's got the ball. I believe Charlton County recovered it. Lemuel Walker. Walker, yeah, dove right on top. Yeah, Dasher trying to option to the left to the weak side of the field. Loads it up to the right. Watch this coming to the left side over here. Reads the defensive end properly. The pitch is a little low, however. Heads up play, though, there by Walker. Probably in a split second anticipating was not going to make a clean catch. Turned his body so he'd be in position to re recover it once it hit the, hit the carpet. Here's Charles now. Second down and goal at the nine. Loss was about three. Solid formation up front. Going to fake the draw. Look and throw. Batted down at the line of scrimmage by Demetrius Cody. Excellent defensive play by Early County. He was trying to go to Donnelly. DJ Donnelly off to the right. Fake the little trap up the middle. Cody, the junior linebacker, one of the leaders on that linebacking core there for Early County. Followed that play, read that play offensively perfectly. Got over there, got his arm out, was able to deflect the pass. Third down and goal from the nine. It's viewers like you that help make great local programs like these high school football games possible on Georgia Public Broadcasting. To show your support, simply visit our website at www.gpb.org. It's totally secure, simple to use, and takes just two minutes. And thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. I think it's as good as advertised. We have been wanting one like this, and, uh, man, this has been a great one so far, Dave. Well, Tommy, they wore us out yesterday with 65 points, 7 for Lovett, so we had more points than we thought we were going to get. We come into this game today thinking we're going to have a lot of points, and so far it's been a defensive battle. 
They've been able to move the football, but the defenses, uh, the defenses on both sides have just not allowed anything as of yet as they've just kind of uh, clamped down and, uh, you know, buckled down and kept these offenses out of the end zone. The amazing thing, I think, that uh, about this football team is that Charlton, even though they haven't scored and they're a pass-oriented football team, has managed to keep possession of the football almost the entire first quarter. Now realize, too, Dublin is waiting in the wings for the winner of this game, and we know what Dublin can do offensively. Oh, definitely. These defenses got to get ready. Third and goal from the nine. Dasher, three wides left, two wides to the right, rolling, looking, and going to try to throw and going to be chased. Dasher caught and thrown for a loss back at the 11. There was Cody one more time. Demetrius Cody. He is all over the field for Early County. Again, yeah, their linebackers have done a great job keying in. Dasher, not sure whether he's going to run. He's looking to pass here. None of the receivers can get open. And that's linebacker time right there. They just focus in. They, they feed right in on that. And there they come up with a big, uh, a big stop. Cody with a good defensive play. So Charlton now faced with a fourth down and ten. They're going to try a field goal here. Dasher will attempt the kick. He is the kicker. Hunter does it all. Probably drives the team bus on occasion, you would think. Uh-oh. Are you surprised that they're going to run a fake? I don't think so. <laughs> they faked the punt earlier. Why not fake the field goal and go for the goal here, Dave? That's not a surprise to you, I'm sure. No, not at all after we saw after what we saw earlier in this drive, but uh, not quite as much zip on that pass. He had the receiver right there. You had an early county defender there in the end zone on both sides of the intended receiver, and they got a hand up just in time to bat that ball away. There you can see him looking. There's the receiver right there, threw it a little bit too far in front. Ball batted away. Nice shot at the end zone there by Charlton County, but they're going to come up short. Threw it across his body. Was going to his right and to the left. Thanks, camera guys. Good camera work. Cody looks for his receiver to the left side. James Somerset dropped the ball. Early County in the no huddle offense. So both of these football teams do not like to get defenses set. Charlton reads defenses before they call the play. Early just comes up in the no huddle, and they're ready right away. Everybody wants to get into the set. They know what they want to do. They've been doing this all year. Let's just line it up and let's go. Going to run the little draw to Somerset. Not much there. Emmanuel Taylor who is one of the leading rushers on this early county team, handed the ball off to Somerset, the halfback. And you have to, you know, say early county here has not really gotten into a rhythm because they haven't had the ball. This is only their second possession. You're right about that. All right, we've played one in the Georgia Dome. It was all that was advertised to be and more. No score in the Dome between Early County and Charlton County. We'll be back. And I'd like to suggest to you that inspiration is not something that comes and goes. This is a whole new look at inspiration. Dr. Wayne Dyer, America's foremost spiritual guide and mentor, presents Six Steps to Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling. Sunday at 10 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. As a proud sponsor of the Georgia High School Association, Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations provide reliable electricity and service, not only to our communities, but to the athletes within them. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, lighting the way. Wachovia helps our customers stay informed about important issues by supporting GPB. We see it as an essential part of our commitment to serve our growing state. With hundreds of financial centers and ATMs in Georgia, Wachovia can help you realize your financial goals. Discover the magic of trumpeter Chris Bodie as he's joined by Sting, Gladys Knight, Paula Cole, 
Bert Bacharach, Jill Scott, and others in Chris Bodie Live with orchestra and special guests. Tuesday at 9 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Funding for this program is provided by the Georgia High School Association. The GHSA would like to thank Verizon Wireless for the outstanding support of high school sports programming on GPB. Hello, I'm Ralph Swearingen. More than 163,000 Georgia students compete in high school sports and nearly 84,000 participate in GHSA non-athletic competition. These sports and activities enrich educational experiences. On behalf of Verizon Wireless and the GHSA, thank you for your support. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Third down and 11 for Early County, back at their own nine-yard line. Emmanuel Taylor, the quarterback, with a single setback. And Charlton County jumps, I believe, into the neutral zone. So the flag comes out. Going to help uh, Early County here as they're backed up, as uh, as you said, Tommy, just inside the 10-yard line. So We have a dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Adam Davis jumped offside. Take the five yards and uh, help get you out of the hole. Third down and six. Early a little tentative here on offense, but in reality, they haven't gotten into that good rhythm yet. They haven't had the ball much. Emmanuel Taylor back at the 10 with a single setback. Wide receivers, three to the right, one to the left. Taylor rolling, looking to throw. Got a man out there, complete. Up at about the 29-yard line, John Micah Henderson, the wide receiver. We talked about Henderson in our uh, pregame here. As you see, Taylor working out of the shotgun, going to roll out, going to roll out. Good protection, fires, really threw into some coverage, but Henderson made a nice catch. And the, the interesting thing about Henderson, averages just over 18 yards on each reception. Man, did he cut that thing loose. You're talking about Dasher and Taylor. We've got two throwers here, buddy. We really do. Taylor, reading the play off of his arm pad, going to run to the left. Taylor to the corner and going to lower his head and get about five or six yards up around the 36. Rashawn Edwards up to make the stop. That was a run designed from point one, I think, there. Well, he was. He was trying to get to the outside portion of the field. There you see 151 rushes, almost 800 yards, a little over five yards on average per carry. And, he, of course, he's been very successful with that uh, 19 touchdowns coming into the Georgia Dome this weekend. Early with the no huddle look, two wide receivers to the top of the screen and two down at the bottom. Taylor going to run the little hitch pass. Nowhere to go over there. It is complete, but Charlton had him bottled up. Deonis Bryant, the receiver over there, actually no gain on a completed pass. Bryant almost 500 yards receiving coming into the Dome this weekend. Five touchdowns, and, and he, like, uh, like the other members of the receiving core, averaging about 12 yards on each reception there from Taylor. Third down and about five. Emmanuel Taylor back at the 31. Little look in pass complete. John Micah Henderson once more up at the 42 yard line. Check it. That might be Trent George. I'm not sure. Let's see if that's five or six. It's hard to tell from here. It looks like five. And just enough for the first down as well. So starting to see early county, Tommy, get that uh, offensive rhythm going. The amazing thing is, is these two teams use the forward pass as an offensive set. It's not an afterthought as most. Charlton has 100 total yards, early county 34. Taylor throwing, got a man out there. Henderson a little behind him, down at about the 35-yard line. Excellent coverage out there by Ralph Bolden, DJ Donnelly, and Harry Gibbs for Charlton County. Brings up second down and 10. Taylor also, as we see with Dasher, not shy about about uh, firing that ball downfield. Good coverage there by Charlton County. Uh, the DBs in the corners uh, coming over and, uh, and knocking that ball away. 
The amazing thing about these two football teams, double coverage, triple coverage, means absolutely nothing when they want to zip the pass into a, a, a receiver they're going for. Here's Taylor on second down and 10. Taylor going to run the sweep and get up across the 45-46 yard line where Gerard Ham, one of the first ones in there to meet him. And also Marquise Lambert in there to help out. The game was four on the play, third down and six. They just read their arm. They have the plays on the arm, and that's how they read it. It's amazing to play from the sideline if they need help. Taylor. Sending signals, wide receivers, three to the right, one to the left. Taylor rolling right, looking, throwing, complete, down at about the 40 once more. Emmanuel Taylor rolling right, John Micah Henderson one more time. All right, I think you're starting to see the early county offensive engines warming up here as Taylor's starting to direct this offense downfield. Another gutsy throw downfield here. You see him roll out. He rolls out looking for the receiver. There he is. Henderson goes up. Beautiful catch. And he's run out there just beyond the 40-yard line. But great coverage as well by Charlton. These quarterbacks just are not ashamed, folks. They're going to throw it where they need to throw it at that given moment. Two wides to the right and to the left. Emmanuel Taylor, single setback. Good protection, rolling, throwing, and out of bounds. Complete down at about the 25-yard line. Well, it was a nice catch, just couldn't, couldn't, the momentum of catching the ball couldn't keep him from uh, falling out of bounds. Albert Lee on the reception, but he's out of bounds. Look at Taylor here. Roll, look, throw. I think the throw may have pulled him out of bounds. That's what I'm you saying. Think? Yeah, the momentum of the, the momentum of having to go to his left carried the momentum of that carried him out of bounds. Made a nice catch of the play anyway, but unfortunately no no yardage to go with it three wides to the left one to the right snap to Taylor looking throwing got a man across the middle oh my what a hit by DJ Donnelly on Deonis Bryant coming across the middle you could hear that uh, helmet to helmet up here in the in the booth he just looks looking right across the middle there's your receiver couldn't hold on and boom Ooh. Oh, my goodness. That hurt up here. Yes, it did. <laughs> Third down and 10, Early County. Somerset, the single setback with Taylor. Three wides to the left, one to the right. Key possession down for Early County here. They've moved it pretty well here. Taylor, complete. Breaking tackles and out of bounds. Down at the... About the 31 yard line. Nico Wimberly on the reception. Boy, I love the speed, Tommy, after the reception. You see how quickly he changed directions, went to the left side along the uh, sideline and turned upfield, ended up picking up an extra six or seven yards after the catch. Well, I don't think we misled people when we said there was speed galore in the pregame show. We have definitely seen it through this first quarter and three minutes here. There he is, cuts one way, cuts back towards the side of the field, and boom. Fourth and two, no problem, no punt. Taylor now checks to the sideline. Two wides to the right and to the left. Taylor going to run the draw, and I think he got it. These two quarterbacks are absolutely amazing, Dave. I hate to belabor the point, but these, these are two great athletes, Dasher and Taylor here. It's just fun to watch these guys handle these offenses well we've talked about it what makes both of them so dangerous is their versatility they can hurt you whether they keep it and keep it on the ground or whether they want to fire a bullet in the air as we've seen here throughout the first and uh, second quarters is early county going to call a timeout here or do we have the officials discussing something they're going to bring the change out. okay all right we said first down we whoa let's see the spot yeah i oh, thought he had it yeah he picked that up easily yeah we thought so First down, Early County. Always good to be sure, though. Yeah, it is. Down at the 28-yard line. So Early started back inside their own 10-yard line, and now here we are. Down at the 28. So they are getting into that offensive rhythm. It does take a rhythm with these particular offenses. 
And the wide receivers love running all over the place, all over this dome floor. Taylor. Give to Somerset. Nothing there. Ooh. Definitely nothing there. All of the Charlton County front defensive front. Lemuel Walker. Well, they, they read that play uh, perfectly. The, the Charlton County defense did. It was absolutely nothing. That The door was shut before he ever got his, uh, his hand on the door handle. I'm sure if Taylor thought about it again, he wouldn't even hand the ball off. And Somerset has been very productive this year. Seven touchdowns, just over 357 yards rushing coming into this game. Loss of five on the play. Second and a long 15. Taylor looking, throwing, had him wide open and missed him down at the 10-yard line. Nico Wimberly wide open. Wide open, just got that ball at, uh, up a little bit too high. The pass sailed. Otherwise, you're looking at early County putting six up on the scoreboard because that wide receiver, Wimberly, had the, he ran the, the perfect route. He didn't have a Charlton County defender on either side of him and just couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't get that ball low enough. Charlton one out of four on third down conversions early, a little better at three and five as we're at the 744 mark. Early County has called timeout. Timeout trying to get things reset. They're awfully close, but they know that Charlton County defensively does not give up a lot. And you got to come out of this timeout knowing exactly what your game plan is, what you're going to do offensively to try to combat that. I tell you, I, I think probably the biggest surprise to you and I is the no score, but both teams have moved it. No score, 7.44 till halftime. Early County and Charlton from the Dome. We'll be back in just a minute. Funding for this program is provided by the Georgia High School Association. The GHSA would like to thank Dodge for the outstanding support of high school sports programming on GPB. Dodge dealerships across Georgia are proud to bring you the exciting action of GHSA Championship Football. As the official vehicle of the GHSA, Dodge salutes the hard work, community spirit, and dedication of these two fine teams. Thanks for tuning into GPB, and please enjoy the rest of the game. Dodge, grab life by the horns. Charlton County nothing, Early County nothing, still 7.44 left of the first half, and that's probably a bigger surprise than anything if there's no score in this football game, far in contrast to the 65-7 game we had with Dublin and Lovett. The winner of this game will play Dub Dublin next week for the state double-A championship. That ought to be an outstanding football game. Based on what we've seen from both of these offenses, it should be a track meet. Third and long, Taylor. Marcus signals, rolling, throwing. Got a man out there, breaking tackles down to around the 24-yard line. Elbert Lee on the reception. And I certainly don't think they're going to try anything here other than to try to convert a fourth down here. Neither one of these teams are real big on punts and, and field goals, obviously. Now, these guys are all about getting into the end zone. And that's what uh, Early County's going for here on, on this drive. They don't want to come away with three. I mean, they will if they have to, but in a game like this against an offense as potent as Charlton County, you've got to get what you can get when you got the opportunity. And fourth, they've got that right now. Yeah, fourth and eight. Three wides to the left and one to the right. Taylor looks into a four-man front. Charlton bats it down up at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive play over there by the defensive end on the outside, DeVaro Graves. Got his hand up, knocked down to Taylor. Throw to left side over there, so the ball goes over now, and Charlton takes over. Great play by Graves, the defensive end. A big 6'4 senior got up there, read that play, read the offense, and just was able to get up there, and those uh, long arms and knocked that ball down. Good defensive stand by Charlton County. Defenses are actually outshadowing or overshadowing the offenses so far here in this half. It's definitely been a defensive struggle, which seems a little impossible to believe, but this has been a defensive struggle. First down and 10. Dasher with Bolden the setback. Two wides to the left. Going to run the little trap. Not much there. The give was to Lemuel Walker. 
Very little there. Latavius Davis made the stop for Early County. Demetrius Cody also got in there from the linebacker spot. I think they had a good read on uh, on that one as well. We've we've called Cody's name quite a lot today. Yes, we have. Very active. Loss of actually one on the play at second down and 11. Back at the 23-yard line. Dasher brings him up. Two wides to the left, one to the right. Tight inside of the field, it's to the right. Sends a man in motion. Now going to throw the halfback pass. But coming from the backside, Sean Williams. Knocks down DJ Donnelly. Well, this is a little bit of a trick play. He's going to come out. He's going to look for one of these wide receivers. Milton, I believe, going down the sideline and just had no time at all other than to make a quick look to see if the receiver was even where he was supposed to be before he had a blue jersey bringing him down to the turf. Great backside pressure that time by Sean Williams. He just busted through there. I don't think Donnelly even suspected he was there. Two wides, or rather, two wides to the left, three now to the right. Single setback as Dasher, the quarterback. He's back at about the three-yard line. Third and a bundle. Well, now there's a strange occurrence. We get to see a kick. And a good one it is. A third down quick kick down to about the 26 for Charlton County. Yeah, When's the last time you saw a quick kick? Uh, it's, been a, it's been quite a while. Quite a while. When we expect them to kick, they don't. When we don't expect them to kick, they kick. Just not something that we've seen a whole lot of uh, from Charlton County in this ball game. Dasher proved he's also adept at kicking the ball as well. That was a very nice punt. Early County now with the no huddle. Moving left to right. First and ten Bobcats. Taylor at the 20, going to run it and be pulled down from behind. Adam Davis up at about the 28-yard line. The gain was about two and a half, maybe three. Second down and seven or eight. Adam Davis there, you saw number 55, a big 6-2 senior coming into the dome, 51 tackles on the season. Second down. What would you say, a long eight? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe a long seven. Taylor checking off as he does on every play. Good protection again, throwing complete and out of bounds up at about the 42 or the 43 yard line, Tracy Anthony. Watch this one on the sidelines. Taylor's really spreading the ball around. Sure is, just gonna roll out, gonna locate that receiver right there on the sideline. Nice catch as he falls out of bounds. First down, early county. No huddle. Up at the 41. Charlton now on a 3-5. Taylor going to fake and run up across the 40 to about the 45-yard line for another gain. Picked up right about at his average, right about five, five and a half yards on that run. Amazing to see both of these quarterbacks. They just, the offenses are definitely built around both of these players. No question. They, they almost mirror one another as well. Both, both quarterbacks do the same things as, you know, the, similar, they do the same things very, very well. Double wide outs to the left and to the right. Taylor dropping the throw. Plenty of time. Got a man down the middle. Batted up in the air. Incomplete. And the pass was intended for the honest Bryant cutting across the middle. They run some very unique routes. A lot of post, a lot of slants, and even hooks. Every if you'll watch the different receivers on each play, they're they're just they're really Basically, I think Taylor is just relaying what route to run by calling a number. We've talked a lot about uh, John Henderson. Bryant had 40 receptions coming into this weekend's game in the Dome, so one of the two favorite receivers. You see Taylor, 7 out of 15, 62 yards. He's almost at the 100 mark with the 31 yards rushing. Taylor going to throw again, complete, up at about the 48. 
Now, you're on the lower side here. You're not in the other team's territory. If you're early county, you go for it here on fourth and about three. Nope, they're going to kick it away. Nico Wimberly pulled it in up at about the 48-yard line. So Trent George will drop back to kick it away, and deep to receive will be D.J. Donnelly standing back at about the 16-yard line. Good kick, driving end over end, taken by Donnelly, and knocked out of bounds at about the 20. Good coverage on the kick down there. There you see the, the ball kind of carries him over towards the sideline, so not a lot of room to run to begin with. And I think they're going to spot that ball right at the 20, just inside the 20-yard line. Right. Josh Skipper, I think, on the tackle down there. First down and 10. Charlton County, back at the 19. You keep waiting for an explosion here. I was going to say, when you and I were talking before coming on the air, did you ever think we'd be scoreless this but late in the first half? 2.53 left in the half, still scoreless. One wide out to the right, two to the left. Single setback, Dasher. Hunts, looks, throws. Overshoots it up at about the 36. Into double coverage. Pass intended for Devaro Greaves. The well, big Gre six foot four tight end. I was going to say, Greaves has been an intended receiver on a couple of occasions here. And even at 6 4, that pass sailed way too high. No way he was going to come down with that. And again, Dasher throwing into double coverage over there along the right sideline. Second down and 10. Nose of the ball just inside the 20 yard line. Early has one timeout left. Charlton has all three timeouts left. Dasher and Bolden in the backfield. Wide outs everywhere. Going to run the wing back reverse. Harry Gibbs on the carry out of the flanker around formation and the gain was about five so it's third down now and five again. Charlton County just trying to mix it up here a little bit throw something at early county and their defense that they don't think's coming and they tried it that uh, that time didn't really go oh, worked if you know they picked up what four or five yards. Well they certainly haven't worn out one play either team they certainly have tried almost everything in their playbook two wides to the left and one to the right for Charlton on this third down possession down. Snap to Dasher. Dasher gonna fake, look, throw, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Jonathan Ferguson up at the 30. Into double coverage once more, but he had him there if Ferguson holds on to it. Well, an awful difficult reception to make is, there you see the fake there by Dasher, gonna roll out here just to his left, fire it across the middle, and had to go up. Couldn't hold on to the football. And, and, and got some help. He did get some help on that one. Again, as you said, throwing into double coverage again. Dasher back at about the 12. He backs up the punt very tentatively. It's almost like they called a timeout. Dasher punts it away at the 26 or the 25 is where it's going to be blown dead. It almost looked like early didn't think they were going to punt. Did you get that feeling? Yeah, it did. It looked kind of odd, uh, like you weren't sure what they were going to do. They're going to run a fake or they're going to kick it. This game can be also viewed live on the GPB Internet site around the world at www.gpb.org. Just follow the links to connect the game. Every game will be archived and available later on GPB's website as well. That's www.gpb.org. Got a great one going in the dome. No score as we head toward halftime. Manuel Taylor going to run the little draw right up the middle, and you can see pressure coming from the outside by Charlton County. Good pressure out there by Gerard Ham on the outside. Obviously, he read the play as well. And they've been doing that the entire ball game, both the early county and the Charlton County defenses. Just not a whole lot there. I mean, They've struggled to get in a rhythm offensively so far throughout the first half. 
Taylor in the no huddle. Two wides to the right and two to the left. Carlton in that three-man front. Taylor throwing complete. Up at about the 47 of the 48-yard line. Tracy Anthony, I believe, or it might have been Ellis Paxton. Well, I believe it was Anthony. He'll take the snap, and he's going to roll out. He locates the receiver. Nice catch, turns, picked up an extra two or three yards before they finally brought him down. Both of these quarterbacks really spread it around. They're not afraid to put it in the hands of any of their wideouts. They're not there for decoration. They're there as receivers. And he will spread it around as will Dasher. First down and ten. Two wides left and right, single setback. Taylor looks into a three-man front. Here comes the blitz. Taylor in trouble. Going to dump it off. Trying to get it out to his up back Somerset. And had to dump it away in a hurry. Second down and ten. Good pressure by Adam Davis from the outside. Also, uh, Jarquest Nightingale, one of the linebackers, came up. Part of a two-man pursuit team that time for Charlton County. And Nightingale, a 5'6 junior, leads that defensive unit with 67 tackles. It's amazing to me to watch this team operate out of the no huddle. What do you tell the offensive line? Lock. Taylor dumps it off to his running back, Somerset, out of bounds. D.J. Donnelly knocks him out of bounds over there. And it'll bring up third down. Third and about nine. Gain was a very short gain as Somerset stepped out of bounds. Starts to get interesting right now, Tommy, because you see the clock only 57 seconds remaining. And we were expecting a high-scoring game. Maybe it'll happen in the second half. Taylor faced with a third down and nine. Good snap. Taylor. Got John Micah Henderson complete down at the 33. Man, he cut it loose. Boy, what a bullet pass thrown. Credit Henderson for it as he's falling backwards. Not sure if he's going to get hit or not, making a beautiful catch. They will split a zone defense for you, won't they? Three wides to the left, one to the right. Hurry up. Offense. Taylor has it tipped. D.J. Donnelly got his hand up, almost had an interception coming across. Good defensive posture by Donnelly coming back against the roll to the right. Either that or Bryant was able to gonna be able to get catch that ball off the uh, deflection. Just out of his reach. Two wides left and right, single setback. Taylor, marking instructions. Looks like pressure's coming again from the outside, and is. Taylor looking, and going to step out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Nothing there, as he was looking for the whole ball of wax. He was going home run there. Well, a heads-up play there by Taylor. Could not locate any of his receivers downfield. Still able to pick up a few yards, and wisely went out of bounds. Stopped the clock at 34 seconds. So it gives him a little more time now offensively to figure out what play they want to come with this late in the half. If you've just joined us, yes. Charlton County nothing, early county nothing. Just before halftime, early county down at the Charlton County 32. Emmanuel Taylor dropping, looking to throw. Got a man out there, complete down at about the 11-yard line. Ventavius Stovall. Spread it around yet to another receiver. Going to say his first reception of the afternoon, and boy, another another bullet absolutely thrown by Taylor. Great catch by the receiver, Stovall. Early County calls their final timeout of the half. Taylor steps, Look throws. At that. Look at that pass. Boom, right in there. Ta uh, beautiful catch there by Stovall, able to hold on. And Joe, just outside the 10-yard line right now is Early County. Both of these teams have great receivers they obviously have great vision gotta have great vision to catch the throws from Dasher 
and the quarterback from Early County, Emmanuel Taylor. They don't lob it in there, folks. They zip it. They bring it. It's, it's, it's a fastball every time. Oh, you're right about that. These receivers have really got to maintain their concentration as they're strolling around there in the offensive end, keeping an eye out on these passes because there's going to be a lot of zip on it when it comes their way. All right, the nose of the ball is down at about the 12-yard line. And in a, in a throwing offense, this cuts down on your ability to run your, your routes as deep as you normally would. So you have to change up a little bit here, and I think that may be why they call the timeout here. Who knows? You know, we'll see what kind of adjustments early makes. They've got very few seconds to make it here. No timeouts remaining. Taylor brings him up. Two wides to the left and two wides to the right. Charlton still in that three-man front with the five backers and the three deep guys. They're going to bring heat to the middle. Taylor rolling, looking, throwing, complete, and out of bounds back at about the nine-yard line, eight-yard line. Actually, it was complete down to around the six, and the force of the blow from Charlton County knocked him out of bounds at the eight. Once again, do you see how much time he had to throw? Very little pressure, and Charlton, of course, Watch Taylor. Look at this. All sorts of time. Finally runs it over to the right side. Locates a receiver. Complete to the five, but Donnelly helped him get back to the eight, if you'll notice there. 18 seconds left. Taylor. Two wides left, two wides to the right. Good snap. Taylor looking, throwing, touchdown. John Micah Henderson. Did you think it would take this long? Beautiful bullet pass right in there. Henderson set up just inside the end zone. And Taylor able to locate. Fired a bullet right in there, and he held on. And it's a 6 to nothing ball game. Did you see where he placed that ball? Right in the numbers. Right in the numbers, and I believe he caught it on his knees. Look. Throwing on the run. Yes, boom, right did. there. Yep. Right on his knees in the end zone. Knew right where to get it. Extra point attempt is no good. Quentin Stamper with the point after. No good. I tell you what, that was a prolific drive there. It, it's, it's very different to see a no-huddle offense run for an entire series. Generally, they'll do something different. They'll get into a huddle, but this has been no huddle the entire first half for early. Makes for an exciting football game to watch, though, doesn't it? When you know these guys are going to come out here, they're going to throw, they're going to run all over the place, not going to bog the game down with the huddles, and, you know, they know what they're going to do. They've prepared for this ball game throughout their run to the playoffs, and, you know, that's why these two teams come in at 11-2 and 13-0 and and on the season. These are both quality football teams. Charlton County, of course, the defending two-time state champions in double-A. And early leads here right before the half. 75 yards, 10 plays, 2 minutes and 4 seconds. He fired in there a 9-yard touchdown pass. A thing of beauty. Trent George will kick it off. Ralph Bolden deep to receive. Little squibber, batted around, and let's see who's got it. I think Charlton has recovered. Ronaldo Jackson, one of the up men, picked it up there. I don't know that that was an intentional squib kick. I think he missed the ball. Well, yeah, it didn't look like it was, uh, it did, you know, the, the kick didn't come off exactly, I think, as he would have liked it to. And uh, for Charlton County, a break that they were able to recover. You don't want to give Charlton the ball at midfield. Dasher can throw it in the end zone from here. Dasher rolling, looking, throwing on the run. In and out of the hands of D.J. Donnelly. Look how far he cut that ball loose running across his body. That's why I'm almost surprised they kicked the way that they kicked with the, with the attempted squib kick because if Charlton recovered as they did, it gave them, it did give them outstanding field position and a potential shot at the end zone. The first half is history here at the Georgia Dome. 
Early County leads it six to nothing. We were expecting quite a different complexion than what we've gotten here in the first half. Well, we said in our open expecting a track meet, and you know we have a, we we've gotten a track meet. They just haven't been able to put all the points on the board. All right, let's go down to Lisa on the sidelines. Lisa, Coach Wolf, how exciting was it to score that touchdown right before half? Well, that was really big. We kind of screwed up with the timeout, and we just recovered from it. Luckily, we got kind of lucky there, but. Uh, but our defense has played great. We moved the ball good enough on offense to kind of swap some field position. So it's a long way to go, though. Long way to go. Any changes in the second half? Uh, I can't think of any. Maybe make sure our protection a little better, maybe or something. But uh, but both teams play great defense. This is daggum. Uh, it's a barn burner. It's definitely been a defensive battle. Thanks, Coach. Thank good luck you. to you in the Appreciate second it. half. Tommy, back up to you. All right, it's halftime, six nothing. Let's take a break here. Early County over Charlton at the half at the dome. Chances are Johnny Mathis celebrates 50 years as a recording artist in a glorious new concert filled with his classic hit songs. Johnny Mathis, wonderful, wonderful. Wednesday at 9.30 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. The Georgia Student Finance Commission. Now students can plan, apply, and pay for colleges in Georgia on one website, gacollege411.org. And by the Mabel Reeder Foundation. It's the oldest state park system in the country. Some areas are so precious and so fragile that you only use them wisely. And it stretches from Tallulah Gorge and Cloudland Canyon to Fort King George and the Little White House. You could spend weeks and weeks going from state park to state park and you'd see something different in every one. Discover the natural wonders and intriguing history that make up the soul of Georgia. Sights to behold, the history of Georgia's state parks. Sunday at 5 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Funding for this program is provided by the Georgia High School Association. The GHSA would like to thank State Farm for the outstanding support of high school sports programming on GPB. State Farm is proud to be the official awards presenter of the GHSA, recognizing outstanding achievements by Georgia's student athletes in competitive sports and activities. State Farm wants families and teens to always drive safe in your communities as you travel to work, school, or play. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This is Celtic Woman, their new show on PBS. Celtic Woman, a new journey, filmed at Slane Castle in Ireland. Don't miss this spectacular concert. Celtic Woman, a new journey. Sunday at 8 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Don't miss live coverage of the Georgia High School State Football Championships. Next Friday and Saturday evening, beginning at 7.30, exclusively on Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. We're at halftime. Early County leads Charlton County 6 to nothing. Charlton County Band, the Band of Pride, performing down on the field here at halftime. And we have a special guest here at halftime, Private First Class Eric Rollins, who's deployed in Iraq with the 3rd Medical Command in MedCom. And uh, first, uh, Private uh, Eric Rollins, welcome, sir. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's nice to be here. Good. Understand you went to Stevenson High School and you're from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. All right, Dave. Private, let me ask you, how are things going for you where you're at right now? Um, it's, it's tough, but you know, we, you just try to make the best of it. Um, take it one day at a time. You know, I understand the bigger picture of why I'm here. You know, I'm just trying to do what I need to do, you know, make my family, I mean, proud of me, you know, just really do what I need to do for my country. Uh, Mr. Rollins, I understand you played football for the Stevenson Jaguars. Tell us about that. Your coach and what role high school football played in your life? Um, coach Ron Gartrell, Coach um, Tobias, Coach Weaver, 
football played a very important part in my life. It started my 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 journey with discipline and helping me helping me just, you know, really focus without without that important piece in my life that that I started my discipline, I wouldn't be able to focus as well as I as well as I am over here cuz the discipline they taught me just continued as I entered the army and now that I'm over here, it's more important than anything else. And I just appreciate what they did for me, just started me on the right path. Did Stevenson ever have the opportunity to play in the Georgia Dome? Actually, Stevenson did have the opportunity to play in the Georgia Dome, but I was out of school at that time. I, I had just graduated, and they had went to the Georgia Dome the following year. By the way, Private Rollins, when do, when do you expect to get back home? Um... I'll be getting back home in the early part of May um, 2007. I mean, early part of May 2007. All right, it's the holiday season. If you'd like, please share any thoughts and greetings to your family and friends you want to say hello to back home. I realize it's 1 o'clock in the morning here, but everybody is, is in a festive atmosphere here in the Georgia Dome. I know you've got some folks you'd like to say hello to and best wishes to. I'd just like to say hello to my mom. Um my little brother, all my family members, everybody in Georgia, everybody st everybody still playing football. Continue, do what you need to do. Don't screw up your life. Make sure everything is good. Make sure you're disciplined. Make sure you stay in school. And I just want to tell everybody, just continue on the right road. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for taking the time to phone in, and thank you so much for serving your country. And our very best to you in the days and months ahead. Thank you so much, Private Rollins. Thank you so much. Charlton County Band down on the field at halftime. What a wonderful conversation, Dave. Well, just great to hear from someone over there and uh, all the good things that they're doing uh, over in Iraq, trying to get that situation back uh, to some semblance of normalcy. All right, the Band of Pride from Charlton County will now entertain us here at halftime. Carlton County High School Band of Pride under the direction of Curtis Hershey. 
and Jennifer Ragsdale. Great performance here at halftime. Always exciting when the bands are able to come out in the field. And, uh, you know, they look forward to coming out here and performing just as much as the football players do. Now let's go down to the sideline and Lisa Weiss. Lisa. Joining me now is Jennifer Ragsdale, the band director. I understand this is the same performance you guys use in competition this yes. year. This was our competition show. It's a sunshine show, sunshine theme. Um, we went to two competitions, did really well with it. Ended up coming home with a grand championship. And for Charlton County, that was a really big deal. The kids worked really hard, really proud of them. I know this is Charlton County's sixth year to the Dome, so obviously it's yours too. Does it get, is it just as exciting for the band as well? It is really exciting. For, this is my first year with Charlton County, so this is my first trip with them to the Dome. But they, you know, they've been showing me the ropes. It's old hat for them. They're really uh, great at it. They love being here. So it's fun for not only the football team, but cheerleaders and band and everybody. How's the community support been? The community of Charlton County, everyone is backing football and band so much everywhere across town. Signs, stickers, bumpers, whatever, decorated with Go Indians, band, football, whatever we do. So it's wonderful to have a community behind you. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Tommy, back to you. Thank you, Lisa. We are at halftime. Yeah. Early County Band of Blue coming up next. Early County leads at halftime over Charlton. Early County 6, Charlton nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. And I'd like to suggest to you that inspiration is not something that comes and goes. This is a whole new look at inspiration. Dr. Wayne Dyer, America's foremost spiritual guide and mentor, presents Six Steps to Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling. Sunday at 10 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. Wachovia helps our customers stay informed about important issues by supporting GPB. We see it as an essential part of our commitment to serve our growing state. With hundreds of financial centers and ATMs in Georgia, Wachovia can help you realize your financial goals. Discover the magic of trumpeter Chris Bodie as he's joined by Sting, Gladys Knight, Paula Cole, Burt Bacharach, Jill Scott, and others in Chris Bodie Live with orchestra and special guests. Tuesday at 9 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Support for today's programming is provided in part by the following. Honor, integrity, determination, the traits of a winner, the definition of our philosophy. As a proud sponsor of the Georgia High School Association, Georgia's electric membership corporations are committed through local ownership and service to providing reliable electricity to better serve not only our communities, but the athletes within them. Georgia's electric membership corporations, lighting the way. With fame came an emptiness that only one thing could fill. He was an ordinary kid from Tupelo who became the king of rock and roll. And he never got too big for gospel music. He touched me. The gospel music of Elvis Presley. Monday at 9 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. American Soundtrack presents doo Best on PBS. Monday at 10.30 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Early County 6, Charlton County nothing. Georgia High School Association football semifinal in Class AA. The winner of this game plays Dublin next week. Let's go down to the field and enjoy the Early County High School Band of Blue under the direction of Glenn Sperman, assisted by Ross Roddy and Kay Wright. Jasmine Brown is the drum major.
Just Charles put seven players in the uh, or pro players since 1990. Chant Bailey. Let's go downstairs once more. Here's Lisa Weiss. Joining me now is band director Glenn Berlin. And talk about how proud you are of this marching band that's performing right now. Oh, very proud. Uh, they have a lot of heart. Sometimes we go against bands that are twice as large as us, but uh, we always come out uh, on top, I think. Very proud of them. They have a lot of heart. Talk about how you get ready for this performance at the Georgia Dome. Well, um, we took the competition show and our regular marching show and just tweaked it a little bit and, and uh, tried to instill into them this, just come over here and have some fun. And that's so, what we tried to do. So how did you all do in competition this year? I know you were out of competition for four years and you came back this year. Uh, luckily, we got all ones. Uh, quite an accomplishment since uh, a four-year absence. So we basically had to redo everything and, and teach them the, the style that's necessary for competition. And uh, they caught on very well and were very receptive and did a good job with it. I know we were talking earlier because you were saying your band is one of the smaller bands, but they have a big heart. How does that translate in their performance? Um, well, of course, when you have a small band, you're more exposed. So each person's got to carry more weight. So it's a lot of responsibility on the individual, but we try to preach uh, one band, one sound, and uh, they do a very good job at it. Well, they sound great to me. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Tommy, you. back to you. Thank you, Lisa. It's always great when you, see a, when you see a group like this really pull together. Let's take a look at our first half highlights, Dave, and quite honestly, it won't take long to describe these. Not at all. Here's the touchdown. Taylor going to roll out, fires a bullet in the end zone. It was a nine-yard touchdown pass to Henderson. You see it from another angle from the end zone. He set up perfectly just inside the end, uh, the end zone line there. Made a nice catch. 6-0 our score. 6-0. There you see the stats of the first half. Early with an advantage in passing, 137-19. Charlton with a rushing leadage, uh, a rushing yardage lead and total yards early, 164-90. Early county leads at half, 6 to nothing. We'll be back at Georgia Dome in a moment. Johnny Mathis celebrates 50 years as a recording artist in a public broadcasting. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Early County 6, Charlton County nothing. Georgia High School Association football semifinal in Class AA. The winner of this game plays Dublin next week. Let's go down to the field and enjoy the Early County High School Band of Blue under the direction of Glenn Sperlin, assisted by Ross Roddy and Kay Wright. Jasmine Brown is the drum major. Thank you. 
It says Charlton's put seven players in the uh, or pro players since 1990. Champ Bailey. Let's go downstairs once more. Here's Lisa Weiss. Joining me now is band director Glenn Berlin. And talk a bit of how proud you are of this marching band that's performing right now. Oh, very proud. Uh, I have a lot of heart. Sometimes we go against bands that are twice as large as us, but uh, we always come out uh, on top, I think. Very proud of them. I have a lot of heart. Talk about how you get ready for this performance at the Georgia Dome. Well, um, we took the competition show and our regular marching show and just tweaked it a little bit and and uh, tried to instill into them this, just come over here and have some fun. Yeah, that's so, what we tried to do. So how did you all do in competition this year? I know you were out of competition for four years and you came back this year. Uh, luckily, we got all ones. Uh, quite an accomplishment since uh, a four-year absence. So we basically had to redo everything and, and teach them the, the style that's necessary for competition. And uh, they caught on very well and were very receptive and did a good job with it. I know we were talking earlier because you were saying your band is one of the smaller bands but they have a big heart. How does that translate in their performance? Um, well, of course, when you have a small band, you're more exposed. So each person's got to carry more weight. So it's a lot of responsibility on the individual, but we try to preach uh, one band, one sound, and uh, they do a very good job at it. Well, they sound great to me. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Tommy, you. back to you. Thank you, Lisa. It's always great when you, see a, when you see a group like this really pull together. Let's take a look at our first half highlights, Dave, and quite honestly, it won't take long to describe these. Not at all. Here's the touchdown. Taylor going to roll out, fires a bullet in the end zone. It was a nine-yard touchdown pass to Henderson. Here you see it from another angle from the end zone. He set up perfectly just inside the end, uh, the end zone line there. Made a nice catch. 6-0 our score. 6-0. There you see the stats of the first half early with an advantage in passing, 137 to 19. Charlton with a rushing leadage, uh, a rushing yardage lead and total yards early, 164 to 90. Early county leads at half, six to nothing. We'll be back at the Georgia Dome in a moment. Johnny Mathis celebrates 50 years as a recording artist in a glorious new concert filled with his classic hit songs. Johnny Mathis, wonderful, wonderful. Wednesday at 9.30 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 613, has served Georgia business for 80 years without a work stoppage. Our bonded workers are skilled, drug-free, and get the job done on budget and on time. IBEW is putting families to work in Georgia. Don't miss live coverage of the Georgia High School State Football Championships next Friday and Saturday evening, beginning at 7.30, exclusively on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Support for today's programming is provided in part by the following. Enthusiasm, competition, 
teamwork, celebration. These are just a few of the attributes Wachovia shares with the outstanding young men and women competing in the Georgia High School Association Boys and Girls Championships. And that's why Wachovia Bank proudly supports the GHSA Boys and Girls Championships on Georgia Public Broadcasting. With hundreds of financial centers and ATMs in Georgia, Wachovia is a proud community partner. Teeming with life and shrouded in mystery, these islands are a place of beauty and endless discovery. I'm Dixie Carter. Join me for a revealing look at the secret seashore, Georgia's barrier islands. Sunday at 6.30 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Tommy Palmer along with Dave Cohen at the Georgia Dome as we get set for the start of the third quarter. The last thing we expected was a 6 nothing football game at this halftime, Dave. Except, as we said in our open, Tommy, you look at the history of these two teams the last couple of weeks, early county going to 11-2. They beat Calhoun 20-3, giving up just the field goal. So, again, their defense really rose to the occasion. And then over the last two weeks in their games against Buford and Scriven County, they've only given up. Charlton County has only 13 points. So these defenses have really, really been dominant and what we have here today is when a dominant offense comes up against this dominant defense, right now the defenses are winning the battle. Well, last week, I believe, early led Calhoun 14-3 at half, and Charlton and Buford were nothing-nothing at the half, and Charlton exploded in the second half. So it'll be interesting to see what happens to both these football teams in the second half because both of them have played lights-out defense here in the first half. Boy, is Dasher and uh, Taylor just so fun to watch. I mean, I love watching Dasher throw across his body, throw that slingshot sidearm pass, and, of course, Taylor always mixing it up. You can't tell when he's out of the shotgun. Is he going to Is he gonna run? Is he going to look for a hole straight up the middle? Or is he going to fade out to one of the sides and fire to one of the receivers? All right, let's go down to the sidelines once more before we get into the third quarter. Here's Lisa Weiss. Coach Mack, what a defensive half that first half was. Did you change anything up for the second half? I don't know. I'll tell you, early county, I told our kids if they weren't scared of losing a the game, they may very well lose a game. Uh, and I, I don't know if we got that through to our kids this week. And right here in this first half, we got our tails kicked pretty good up and down the field, I think. Our, uh, their guys are better than our guys right now. They're, they're whipping us pretty good. I don't know if we, uh, you know, I really don't know what's going to happen in the second half. But if, if, uh, if the same, if the first half's like second half, we'll get blown out of this thing. You're, I thought your team did a pretty good job defensively, though, holding them to just six points. Not really. I think they, uh, I think they were able to go up and down the field and uh, do some things. We, we left people wide open. Uh, their, you know, their quarterback ran when he needed to run. He threw when he needed to throw. We just uh, we couldn't get him off the field when we needed to. We had third and long situations. We couldn't get him off the field. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Tommy, back to you. Coach McWhorter. He's concerned, as you can tell, or he, either he's setting a trap. You, 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 you don't know how to handle this. What do you think, Dave? Well, you know, I think it's very real. Like you said, if his team wasn't scared coming into the ball game, coming out of this locker room at halftime, looking up on that scoreboard and seeing that they've put no points up on the score, and they, d despite the fact that they've only given up six, it's kind of a scary prospect from, from their standpoint, a, as high-powered an offense as they've had to be held off the scoreboard. And, you know, once you get into the Dome, there's not a weak team in this uh, playoff. And, and so, you know, it's down to the final two quarters here or they're going home. Well, I, as we said, I don't think this is what we expected. And I don't think either defense expected either team to be as prolific as they have been with the throw. You, you can lose this game on one play. I mean... Th th these teams can score from anywhere, Dave. You know that as good as I do. Oh, no question. I mean, you're talking about two high-powered offenses, but, but, you know, like we've said, right now the defenses are just leading the way. For Charlton County, the first five possessions, they went uh, seven plays, went 40 yards, and lost it over on downs. The second possession, 15. They went 60 yards over on downs. They had to punt the next two times, and then it was the end of the half. So uh, the offense, even though they've been able to move somewhat, just not a whole lot there. For Early County, their first four possessions, first one went three plays, eight yards. They had to punt. Next one, a nice long sustained drive, 16 plays, covering 59 yards, but it was over on downs. The third one, five on uh, five uh, plays, they went 22 yards, ended up having to punt, 
And the last one they scored on, it was a 10-play, 75-yard drive. It ended up with a 9-yard touchdown pass. And up until that point, we didn't think Early County had done much on offense. But, boy, they really got it in gear on that touchdown drive. And they used the clock extremely well. And Early County is going to get the ball to begin the second half as Dasher will kick it off here to begin the second half. Early County deep to receive. Dasher with a good kick. Down at about the five-yard line. Tracy Anthony on the return up to about the 17 or the 18-yard line. Good pursuit there on special teams by number two, Jarquest Nightingale, the junior. He was one of the first white jerseys down the field. Great pursuit after the catch to keep them bottled up. They're going to spot that. It looks like... Right there, about the 17, 18 yard line. Emmanuel Taylor back out to call the signals. Got his running back, Nico Wimberly, back there with him. Nope, that's James Somerset. I'm sorry. Wimberly is wide to the left in the slot. Charlton still in that three man front. Here goes Taylor. Got to cut it up across the 20 to the 23 yard line. Got a good block on the corner out there from Somerset. Looked like Gerard Ham made the stop. Taylor, 14 out of 24, 137 yards and one touchdown in the first half. Second down and six, Early County from the 22 yard line. Two wide receiver, rather three to the right, one to the left. Taylor looking right, has it batted around, and Donnelly has intercepted. Donnelly down to about the 17 or the 18. Got a good block and a good tip and a key turnover here for Charlton County. Well, sometimes it only takes one thing to change the course of a ball game. There's the tip. Ball falls right to Donnelly. Turn starts to head back upfield before they're able to bring him down. But all of a sudden, we're only... We're very early here in the third quarter. A big play on defense for Charlton County. Has them knocking at the door as they're at the 17-yard line. Lemuel Walker got his hand up and batted it up in the air. And Donnelly ran under it. No fair catch needed on that one. Not at all. All right, here comes Charlton now. Two wide receivers left and right. Single setback. Dasher with a short field of work. Early going to jump up in there and chase after him. And Dasher going to go down at about the 15-yard line. Boy, Early is blowing those backers right up the middle. When those guards pull, they really bring the heat. They do an outstanding linebacker core for Early County. Going to try to close the holes as quickly as possible. They know how dangerous Dasher is. If, he, if it doesn't look like he's going to go to the air, they've got a key on him to keep him from picking up and hurting them with the uh, yards on the ground. One-yard gain on the play, second down and nine. Early up there, now on a five-man front. Dasher going to fake the little sprint draw. Be caught and thrown by Trent George back at the 25. But George was coming the entire time. They had to key on him. Once they knew that he was not going to pull back and throw that ball, you got to key on him to keep, you from hurting, to keep him from hurting you by running that ball, which he's very adept at as well. And great pursuit that time by George to bring that play to a quick end. I think the backer, George, waited to see if it was going to be the draw. When he saw it wasn't the draw, he just headed right for Dasher. Third and long, long yardage. 17 to go. Dasher spreads them all over the field. Three wides to the left. Going to run the draw and going to be knocked down hard at about the 22-yard line. Codell Collier made the stop. Gain of about three, third and 15. Watch the draw here. George gets a hand in there, but Collier stayed right there. Also a nice job defensively by uh, Codell Collier coming up to help out on that tackle. Obviously, this is four down territory, or are we going to try a field goal here? The last time we lined up this formation, we had a fake, so I'm sure Early's going to be watching for that as well. Dasher to try the field goal. Kick is up, and the kick is blocked. And Early County going to pick it up and run it back to the 33-yard line. Williams with the block. Rodriguez Harris with the return. 
So now you're starting, Tommy, to see some, some key plays here. We have the tip and the interception. And for Charlton County, nothing going on offense. They're coming up to attempt the field goal. And now the special teams unit with a big, big play there on the block of the field goal. And they recover the football. Just like a heavyweight fight. A punch and another punch. A punch and an answered punch. That's what's happening here in this football game. But we didn't see as many exciting plays in that first half. Now it's starting to heat up here early in the second. Yes, it is. Taylor going to try to run the draw once more to Somerset, and that's about the third or fourth time he's run that, and there has been absolutely nothing there all night. There. Well, very strong defensive lines on both sides for uh, Charlton County and, and Early County when they've been on the defensive side. Awfully hard to run into the line like that with those draw plays, as Early County is finding out. And Giddens, one of the best linebackers in the state of Georgia, number 47, watch him. He is very active and very arrives in a bad mood most of the time coming into the dome second on the Charlton County defensive unit in tackles second and ten batted away once more Devaro Greaves once more with his second block so if they can't catch Taylor and they can't run him down they're just gonna stay put and get the hands up seems like the defensive unit have come out more fired up here as we start uh, as we're early in the third quarter Nice job defending that one, knocking that ball down. Size to do it. Greaves at 6'4", 215. Well, you can't teach height. You can't. Third and 10. Taylor got him at the 33. Low snap, picks it up. Flag goes down. Somebody moved. Charlton's pointing to early. Maybe a motion penalty. Could be somebody moving in that interior line. Dead ball, false start on the offense, still third down. Third and long. So the field position has been great one time, been good one time here in the third quarter. That was after the deflection and the interception, but they weren't able to take advantage of it. And right now, early County with a penalty going to back them up. It's going to put them in third and long. Would you say both these teams are serious about this football game? Oh, no question about that. Dublin waiting in the wings. Third and 15. Taylor. Somebody jumped, and Taylor's going to try the draw play up the middle. Man, they pulled a tackle from the right side. You could see what the scheme was on that one. Did early move again, or did somebody from Charlton jump offside? Let's wait and see. Dead ball, false start, blue, still third down. Somebody moved again. Same problem. Yeah, same problem. Penalties yeah. bogging down early county here on this offensive possession. Trey Wolf will not like that. So it goes from third and 10 to third and 20. Hard to convert those third and 10s, much less third and 15 and third and 20. Taylor. Three wides to the right, one wide out to the left. Charlton jumping around, three-man front. Looks like they're going to bring a blitz, all-out blitz here. Moving Somerset around. They're jumping around all over the defense over there. Taylor, did more, somebody move again? More flags. Gotta Delay be, of game. Got to be very, very distracting for Taylor the way they keep jumping in and around behind that line. Delay of the game. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Took too much time to change the play at the line of scrimmage. See the look on Trey Wolf's face there. He was not particularly happy about that. Three straight five-yard penalties, and you're backing yourself up into a problem here even if you kick the ball away. Well, I guess Charlton County, no matter what happens, if, uh, if they end up punting, is going to have really, really good field position. Third and 25. Tough to convert. Here comes Taylor. Got a block at the corner. Taylor going to be thrown out of bounds up at about the 28-yard line. Harry Gibbs runs him out of bounds up there. So it's fourth and long. Nice job trying to get something to the outside. Was able to uh, use his speed, get out there. Not going to get anywhere close to a, f a first down type situation, but uh, now they're going to be in a position where they're going to punt the ball. Charlton County, it could very well end up with really good field position. D.J. Donnelly back deep to receive. 
Good snap. Kick off the side of the foot. Got to bounce. Out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. I'll tell you, the impressive thing about both these football teams is when there is a run, the wide receivers are not one-dimensional. They can block. And well, that's, they, that's amazing. Well, you've got to have uh, receivers that can block like that because uh, even you know, if the play's not coming their way, if it turns out to be, end up being a running play, they, it's their job to get down there and open up some holes. First down, 10, Charlton. Dasher gets to go to work back at the 39. Good field position now for the Indians. Ralph Bolden and Dasher back at about the 32 or 33. Two wides to the right, one to the left. Tight inside of the field is the right. Man in motion, Donnelly. Got another flag. Both teams have come out here very, very tense in the second half. Would you call it? So-called false start. The first down. On Charlton County, the same three penalties we saw early County suffer through here just a moment ago has befallen Charlton County on their first offensive play. They, they do have pretty good field position at the 34. Right. First and 15. Two wides to the left, one to the right. Single setback is Ralph Bolden back there with Dasher. Do have a tight end. Going to run the little counter trap and not get much up to about the 38. Bolden on the carry. Codell Collier on the stop. We've called his number a few times, too. He's been active. There's the handoff boy. Got right by Wimberly, number seven. Good job coming over and assisting on that tackle is Collier. They are playing enthusiastic on defense, both sides of the ball, jumping all over the place. Reckless abandon. Dasher brings him up. Wide outs all over the field. Wide line splits by Charlton. Bolden in motion. Dasher going to throw the little hitch pass. Got a block on a corner up to the 35-yard line. Terrence Milton on the catch, but excellent coverage out there by Sikori Wade for Early County. So it's third down and 14. Maybe picked up a yard or two. The passes look pretty nice, but when the, the end result is not a lot of yardage. Well, I think what's happening here are the defensive backs are mirroring the wide receivers, and you're shooting pressure from the inside with the linebackers, and so far for Early County, it's working. And on the other side of all, Charlton's doing pretty much the same thing. Wide outs everywhere. Five wides. Dasher looking throwing complete up at the 50 Terrence Milton to the 20 the 10 and out of bounds down at about the seven yard line Albert Lee knocked him out of bounds so it only takes one play let's take a look at it but well, we've been waiting for a big play this entire ball game and that's the first one for Charlton County plenty of time to throw Dasher will look down the right side boom hits his receiver Milton Milton turns on the Jetson, that speed going to carry him down. Nice job to get back there by Lee. Otherwise, Milton's in the end zone. 59-yard play. Doesn't take long to get down to the goal line when you have that kind of real estate ripped off at one place. We kind of expected those kind of plays early in the ballgame, but they haven't happened until just now. High formation, unbalanced line to the right side. And a flag goes down yet again. I think you're going to see the same penalty as we've seen here now four times in this quarter. And you would think at this point in the season, this is game 14. I would imagine both coaches, Coach McWhorter and Coach Trey Wolf, are both pulling their hair out. These are not mistakes that you generally expect to see in game 14. Early County hit with three penalties, and this is the second one on Charlton County. Here in this quarter. High formation, unbalanced line to the right. Dasher going to give to his up back. Lemuel Walker, very little there at about the 11. So early jumps up in there. Anthony Williams, one of the first ones there. 
Here you see the handoff to Walker. Not a whole lot there. Those linebackers come up. They plug the holes awfully quick, and Walker able to pick up a yard on the carry. Robert Worlds in there as well. Early County is going to call timeout here as they try to get a substitution into the ball game. Or did they call a timeout? Second and goal. Dasher going to run the option and going to be knocked down at the nine. Bolden on the option. Tried to get it to the corner. It looked like Early was trying to call for a timeout. Then they got a substitution in and didn't call the timeout. The game was about three. So it's third and goal from the eight. It's a big key play coming up for Charlton County. To be this close, they've got to come away with some points. At 448 to go here, third quarter, down 6 nothing. Unbalanced this time to the left. Almost a wing T set. Dasher going to run to the left and be knocked down hard at about the nine. Anthony Williams out there again, as well as Codell Collier. This is a very active defense. Look at Dasher trying to get out, trying to find some open real estate out there. Couldn't get anything. And you saw there was 31. Anthony Williams that snuck through the defensive line was able to wrap him up around the ankle and bring him down. And Trent George helping as well. Fourth and goal now from the nine-yard line. Dasher, two wides to the right, one to the left. Single setback is Bolden. Early in that four-man front. Looking, Dasher caught and thrown back at the 22. Man, the blocking broke down in a hurry and Early came after it. Early County 6, Charlton nothing. We'll be back at the Dome as this one continues. Funding for this program is provided by the Georgia High School Association. The GHSA would like to thank Verizon Wireless for the outstanding support of high school sports programming on GPB. Hello, I'm Ralph Swearingen. More than 163,000 Georgia students compete in high school sports and nearly 84,000 participate in GHSA non-athletic competition. These sports and activities enrich educational experiences. On behalf of Verizon Wireless and the GHSA, Thank you for your support. 59 yard completion goes down to the eight. Five yard penalty pushes you back to the 13 and you're faced with the fourth and goal at the eight. And then you're thrown for a loss all the way back to the 21. And now here's Early County again with the ball. There you see Dasher going to take that, uh, take the hike. And then all of a sudden, all these blue jerseys surrounding him and a big swarming group of tacklers right there. Got to worry about the big mo right now. A lot of momentum switching with the success of the Early County defense. Two setbacks now. Somerset going to run it up across the 20, maybe to the 21-yard line. First time we've seen two setbacks, one on either side of Taylor today. Mostly it has been the one, the Somerset, on the left-hand side. But he's changed up now, and we've got two, so we're seeing some different looks. Now they're going to send Wimberley out to the right. Three wides to the right, one wide out to the left, and back to the single back set. Charlton in that 3-5. Taylor up to about the 23 or the 24. Marquise Lambert on the stop. Not much there in the way of the run. Boy, Lambert really closed the gap that time. There you see him, 51, a senior, 5'11", 290. And he closed that gap with... Help the young man with yeah. good moves. Some speed and some authority yeah. on that tackle. Third down and nine. Three wide outs right, one to the left. Taylor, plenty of protection. Rolling, looking, throwing, complete. Very close to a first down. D.J. Donnelly again with a how do you do. 
at Deonis Bryant. Boy, Donnelly has really knocked some wood loose today. Look at all the time Taylor has, though. Good job by his line with the protection. He rolls out, hits his receiver, and again, a crushing hit there by Donnelly. But credit the receiver, able to hold on to the football. The reception that time by Bryant. Trent George is going to kick it away, standing back at the 15-yard line. Early going to call timeout here. Late with a substitution. And here again, we were expecting a high-powered game. And I think both defenses have just risen to the occasion here. And you have to give hats off to both defenses the way they have played this game. Well, you do. And early on, I thought that uh, Charlton County was moving it a little quicker. I think the momentum right now favoring early County's defense. It's viewers like you that help make great local programs like these high school football games possible on Georgia Public Broadcasting. To show your support, simply visit our website at www.gpb.org. It's totally secure, simple to use, and takes just two minutes. Thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. Fourth and one, Trent George standing back at the 15. To kick it away, D.J. Donnelly standing back at about the 35 or 34 to receive. High snap and the floater. Going to hit inside the 40 and roll. Got an early county bounce and roll and roll and roll to the 30. Well, the thing about it, if you don't catch it here and it hits the carpet, it's going to roll. And that thing bounced right around the 40-yard line. Knocked another 10 yards back, and it's still pretty good field position for Charlton County right at their own 30. But another 10 yards, I'm sure they would have been happier. First down, 10 yards to go now for Charlton. Coach Rich McWhorter pacing the sidelines and, of course, looking at his playlist, trying to get something motivated here in the way of offense. Dasher, three wides to the top side, two down to the left, split lineman, single setback as Dasher, the quarterback, going to run the draw, going to be caught and thrown back behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one. Latavius Davis. Have you noticed that Charlton has seemingly gotten away from throwing downfield? I mean, it's been a lot of Dasher running and a lot of short passes. You see right now, I just think early County has really keyed on De, you know, key defensively on what Dasher is coming with from the offensive side. It, it seems like uh, Charlton County is not mixing it up quite as much here in the third quarter as they did in the first two quarters. They haven't thrown it north and south. It's been a lot of east and west and a, a lot of draws in this direction so far here in the second half. Dasher dropping the throw. Pressure throws low up at about the 48. Early has really been bringing the heat. I was going to say, I wonder if Charlton County's defensive line starting to tire a little bit because you're right, the uh, the uh, defensive the defensive guys there for Early County having an easier job getting through the line and putting extra pressure on Dasher at a quicker pace. Basically, what it looks like is happening, and this is just conjecture on my part. Of, I think the wide splits in the offensive line of Charlton is working to a disadvantage. Early splitting the gaps on it. You'll see there's the wide split there. And Early is just bringing backers. Wide receivers to the left and to the right. Dasher under pressure. Caught and going to throw the little screen pass. But Trent George stayed home at the 28-yard line. Devaro Greaves on the tight end screen. Watch the splits in the line. Now watch the, you see the splits when they come through? Yeah, Anthony Williams came right up to the line. The minute the ball, the second the ball was snapped, he came right through, totally untouched, had pressure on Dasher and forced him to throw maybe a little earlier than he would have liked. I think they're trying to make Dasher make a decision early and what he's going to do with the ball and not giving him time. The honest Bryant deep to receive. Dasher stands back at the 15 to kick it away as we come to the end of the third quarter. Dasher, driving kick. That Bryant's going to let hit, going to kick back and get an early county bounce back up to the 45-yard line. Early county going to have outstanding field position here, even though we're late in the third quarter. They're almost at midfield. 
on the change of possession early actually picks up 20 yards on the exchange of possessions when early punts to Charlton and Charlton returns the favor. Taylor back at the 40 yard line. Two wides left and right single setback. Good snap Taylor looking rolling throwing got a man out there. Down into Charlton County territory goes James Somerset on the screen. A little back out of them. All right, we have played three quarters. Not what we expected, but it's been a dandy. Early County six, Charlton nothing. Get set for the fourth quarter coming up next. This is Celtic Woman, their new show on PBS. Celtic Woman, a new journey, filmed at Slane Castle in Ireland. Don't miss this spectacular concert. Celtic Woman, a new journey. Sunday at 8 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. The Mabel Reader Foundation. As a proud sponsor of the Georgia High School Association, Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations provide reliable electricity and service, not only to our communities, but to the athletes within them. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, lighting the way. And I'd like to suggest to you that inspiration is not something that comes and goes. This is a whole new look at inspiration. Dr. Wayne Dyer, America's foremost spiritual guide and mentor, presents Six Steps to Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling. Sunday at 10 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Funding for this program is provided by the Georgia High School Association. The GHSA would like to thank Dodge for the outstanding support of high school sports programming on GPB. Dodge dealerships across Georgia are proud to bring you the exciting action of GHSA Championship Football. As the official vehicle of the GHSA, Dodge salutes the hard work, community spirit, and dedication of these two fine teams. Thanks for tuning into GPB, and please enjoy the rest of the game. Dodge, grab life by the horns. Don't miss live coverage of the Georgia High School State Football Championships next Friday and Saturday evening, beginning at 7.30, exclusively on Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. You see the coaches with the headphones on. The information that's being transmitted down to them will tell us what's going to happen in the fourth quarter. They're getting adjustments as the game goes along. Look at the faces. That'll tell the story. Never thought we'd be at 6 nothing at this point. These, these two coaches know that uh, they got 12 minutes left to get something going here. The defenses are really dominating the game. Charlton defense. A fumble. Adam Davis. Was he down? Obviously not. They've called touchdown. Wow. Wow is right. You talk about a turnaround in a hurry. We'll have to see the replay. I didn't see the fumble. I thought he was, I thought, you know, it was a nice tackle. I thought he was down. Wasn't sure if the ground forced the fumble. Emmanuel Taylor was slammed to the ground. I didn't see the ball fall loose, but, you know, we can see it on the replay. Obviously, he just stripped it. All right, here he is. And down, and the ball right there. Yeah, there's loose. the ball. Yeah, there it is. Charlton County ties it at six. Man, talk about a break for Charlton. Great defensive play there by Adam Davis. Lines are down. Good snap. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. Charlton County 7. Early County 6. Sometimes you get a play like that. Defensive uh, unit comes up with a big play. The turnover, the touchdown, swings the momentum back over to Charlton County. Again, you're in the final quarter here. Every, both these ball clubs, their seasons, have 11.50 to go. And one of them's moving on, one of them's not. Let's watch it again. Stripped of the ball. 
Boy, what strength. Did you see the way he whipped him around and flung him down to the carpet? Causing that ball to come loose and then showing a little bit of speed as well after he picked up the ball and scampered to the end zone. He'll remember that one for a long time. Taylor slammed to the ground. The ball fell free. And Charlton, in a matter of 10 seconds, back on top, 7-6. To well, appropriate that Adam Davis, the 6'2 senior, who was third in tackles in this ball club, made that big play. Usually comes down, a lot of these games come down to big plays, and a lot of times it's going to be your key players, your seniors, your more experienced kids are going to make that play, and Davis stepped up that time for Charlton County. Early County, two deep receivers back there. Elbert Lee and Tracy Anthony deep to receive the kick from Dasher. Charlton County now with the lead at 7-6. Driving kick. Anthony at the 10. Going to break a tackle or two and come up to about the 17-yard line. It'll be interesting to see how the early county offense reacts to being behind now. Well, they haven't been the entire afternoon. You know, they held that 6 nothing lead for a good portion of the first quarter. And, uh, you know, now their backs are up against the wall just a little bit. Taylor is 16 out of 30. He's thrown for 150 yards. He's been picked off once. That was the deflection. And then uh, he's got the one touchdown. All right. Let's see if he can lead them down the field. Plenty of time left in the ball game for both squads. Charlton County with the lead. Taylor throwing. Got a man wide open. John Micah Henderson up at the 40. Nothing wrong with Taylor's confidence, is there? Not at all. And when you're, when you're in this situation in this ball game now trailing, you got to go to the big guys, the guys that got you here to the Georgia Dome, and that would be Henderson, the senior. He had 28 receptions coming in, over 500 yards, and you got to go to him. If you're going to throw that ball downfield, go to the guy that got you here. And that's number five. And that's what we were expecting to see almost every play. But uh, we haven't seen that, but it's great when we do get to take a look at it. First down and 10 up at the 41-yard line. Emmanuel Taylor, the quarterback. Charlton in that three-man rush, looping the outside people. Taylor throws out of bounds. Down at about the 23, looking for Anthony down there and threw it away. One of the few times, Tommy, here in the second half that we've seen Taylor rushed out of the pocket. He's had a lot of time to throw the football or decide to, in turn, run the football, but he had pressure that time from Charlton County's defensive unit. They have not huddled the entire afternoon, and I think that is remarkable that kids at this age can do that. They really know their assignment. Taylor, two wides to the right and to the left. Protection breaks down, going to dump it off to the halfback, and there's going to be a loss on the play back to the 36. D.J. Donnelly knocks down James and Somerset, and if you think Charlton's not fired up now, take a look at this. Just a dump-off pass right there out of the flat. Not a whole lot there. He uh, threw, you know, into coverage. 17, Donnelly was right there, read the play perfectly, made the tackle. Two wides to the left now. Henderson going to come to the slot. Be the tight end. Going to send one wide receiver to the right. One single setback. Charlton bringing heat. Taylor caught and thrown. Loses the ball. And Somerset recovers it back at the 15. Talk about your big plays for Charlton. Man, they've come up with two big defensive plays. Look at Taylor. Taylor again, trying to get out to one of the sides there. And you know, that it's not that they knocked the ball. I think he tried to toss that ball back to Somerset. Somerset didn't know it was coming, but had the uh, mind enough to know that he better turn around and jump on top of that ball, or it'd be, it might be a repeat of what we saw when Charlton County scored just a few minutes ago. Trent George to kick it away. Gets a good bounce up around midfield. Now early going to tap the ball dead up at their own 49-yard line. Charlton County again going to have outstanding field position. 
the question of whether or not they can do anything with it. The defense of Charlton County has put them really back in the driver's seat in this ball game right now. First down 10, Charlton County at the 49. Can the early county defense answer here now? Well, they've been strong all afternoon. I think that uh, throughout most of the game have done a pretty good job of getting in there and pressuring Dasher into changing what his initial option would be. Looks like an almost a power run set now. And the give is to Bolden across the left side. Is that Walker? Yes, it is. Lemuel Walker across the left side. Almost a wishbone set. And there you see, quick handoff. Walker going to try to follow his blockers out to the left side. It's knocked around before he's finally brought down. You know, in our open, we featured Walker as one of our featured players. He's been kind of quiet here, although he did have the tip, which led to the interception. But uh, coming in, the 5'8 senior, you see that six rushes, only 29 yards today. And uh, I wonder if they're going to start to feature him a little bit more as the go-to guy here in the final quarter. I think so. I think Charlton has changed offenses and gone to the wishbone. Now to Bolden across the right side. Anthony Williams runs him down from behind. But Charlton now lying him up in the wishbone and just ring it straight at early. So they've changed offensive philosophies here. Again, running in behind the right side of the line this time. They opened up some nice holes. Bolden able to maintain his balance. And nice big chunk of real estate picked up there by Charlton County. Flag down. Let's see what the problem is here. Charlton really motivated on this drive. Started at the 49. Five-yard penalty to first down. First and five for Charlton. Down at about the 15-yard line. Just inside the 15 at the 14. They've just lined up here in the wishbone. In early is playing pass defense, lined up in a pass defense set. And Charlton has just brought the heat. There's Walker again, down inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. I think Charlton has just decided to line up and run it at him. Well, Walker's one of the guys that's uh, been a featured player in their offense. It's got him here to the Georgia Dome. He's been kind of quiet. We saw that graphic just a moment ago. At the time, under 30 yards, now they got to start to get him going. The amazing thing is the big guy who's playing fullback. And the give is to Bolden across the right side. And Trent George meets him there. Early rises up. Yeah, good tackle. Watch this one. Bolden. Nice tackle. Demetrius Cody. He's had a good game. Been in on a lot of tackles today for this early county defensive unit, which has played well virtually the entire afternoon, but their backs are against the wall right now. Dasher brings him up. Wishbone set. Two tight ends. Going to get to Walker, and Walker's going to be knocked out hard again. Man. Robert Worlds. Really shot through there. Watch this. Ooh. Hello. Yeah, he had the read on that play perfectly. As you said, shot through the line, wrapped him up around the lower legs, and he was going nowhere. Third, big, big stop. Third down and goal. Obviously, early made the adjustment to the run game. Look at the total yards. Charlton, 90 and then 79. Early County, 18 in the second half. 164 in the first half. Dasher, rolling, Dasher, breaks a tackle, down to about the three or the four-yard line, fourth and goal. Early strung it out good, Worlds again back there causing problems. So what do you do here? Well, you just see the Charlton County offensively starting to get a lot of momentum, and uh, the offensive line has really kicked in too, opening up some nice holes. They've kept it on the ground here, and Dasher following his blockers nicely. Worlds with a good tackle from behind. Key play on the ball game right here. Fourth and goal from the three. Offset wishbone set. 
toss sweep. And I don't think he got in there. No, he didn't. No, shy by about a yard or two. Sure did not get in there. Early county holds. Rises to the occasion. Walker on the toss sweep. Started outside, cut back inside, and cut back into traffic. So a lot of credit goes to Early County's defense. There you see the pitch to 31, Walker, trying to cut back. And uh, not nearly enough of a lane opened up to get him into the end zone. He was shy by about two or three yards. A lot of blue jerseys. A lot of blue jerseys. One of the first, Elbert Lee, in there to help out. Taylor standing in his own end zone, and there has been no change in offensive philosophy for early here. Taylor throwing. Has got Henderson up around the 22 or the 23. Are you kidding me? Do you see them throw out of the end zone? Like, Tommy, he didn't even give me time to say they were bottled up in their own, in deep in their own end zone before he just fired that pass out the middle. Boy, look at this. Look at this throw. Holy smokes. And Henderson is in stride. He hits him right in stride. Look at that. That's, that's picture perfect. That's beautiful. That is beautiful pass. Here's Taylor. Two wides to the left, two to the right. Time not an issue yet. Taylor throwing complete to one of the up men who's going to run it up to about the 34 or 35 yard line. I think they're shy by about a yard or a half a yard to the first down. Tracy Anthony, he was the safety valve. He was the last read for, for the quarterback there. Just a little dump pass. Just a safety valve to have somebody. He got the first down. They gave him the first down. He did get it. You're right. Up at the 34. And here comes Early charging back. Just over five minutes left. Emmanuel Taylor. Oh, somebody moved again. Tell you what, there's going to be some screaming from the sidelines on this. I think that's the sixth false start penalty we've had here in the second half. A dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Coaches really try to explain it. After you've made the yardage, it's hard to make it again. It's harder to make it the second time than it is the first time. I remember that very well from my high school football game. Here they say, don't make our job any harder than it already is the first time around. Exactly. Here's Taylor. Back at the 23, two wides left and right. Taylor looking, fakes. Now gonna throw. Is it complete? Let's see where they're gonna mark it. They stopped the clock. I'm not sure he even completed the pass. What are they doing over there? Stovall, the intended receiver. It was either incomplete or he caught it out of bounds. Okay, second down and 15 now, back at the 29-yard line. Taylor, barks his signals, drops. Going to run the little screen to Somerset. Somerset trying to break free and can't. Going to be thrown out of bounds for yet another loss. It's going to be third and very long for Early County here. Tommy got to keep an eye on that clock if you're early county four and a half to play. A lot of real estate still to to get through to make this game interesting coming down toward the end here. Third and 15 is tough to convert. Two wides to the right, two to the left. Single coverage by Charlton out there. Taylor. Flushed out of there, looking, going, intercepted at the 41. Donnelly there once more. D.J. Donnelly stepped in front of the early county receiver, and Charlton County has put a stop to this potential drive. Well, they have. That's a big, big play, big interception. Again, as I said, you look at the clock, you're at 428. Not only are they going to have really good field position, they still have the one-point lead. There's some pressure that forces Taylor to roll out. Probably made the, didn't make as nice a throw as he would have liked. Had to throw it on the run a little bit off balance. And Donnelly comes from the outside. He threw it into double coverage yet again, and had gotten with it most of the, gotten away with it most of the afternoon. Here's Dasher now. Going to give it to 
Lemuel Walker. It's amazing that they had so much success with that wishbone set, and now they've gone back to the throw set here. Game was four, second down and six. Charlton County keep it on the ground, keep picking up yardage, chunks of yardage here, but more importantly, keep the clock running right at four minutes. Possession and yardage is what Charlton is looking for here. Dasher. Really knocked down hard at the 38. He faked it to Walker and took it to the right side and Dasher. Nice hit by 31, Anthony Williams. He brought that little run to an end quickly. He's either slow getting up or he is fixing a shoe. I think he's hurt. Yeah. I don't know what he did, but it happened suddenly. And you could hear the lick literally up here through the headphones. Yeah, 31, Anthony Williams again. Uh, Big hard hit on Dasher that time. And he just stopped suddenly. Dasher, let's see if he can walk off here. Yeah, it looks like it's, is it the left ankle? No, it's the right. Is it the right ankle? Yeah. You're talking about losing an integral part of your offense at an inopportune time here with 337 to go in the ball game. That's your place kicker and your punter and your quarterback as well. Let's see who's new in there at quarterback. Dexter Haynes will come in to run the show. And they're going to go to the eye formation. Two tight ends going to run the toss sweep. And got a block at the corner. But it evaporates quickly. At the 31-yard line. Got close, but not close enough. Nice pitch. Watch this spin right here. Boom. Picked up an extra two or three yards on that spin move alone. Bolden on the carry. Fourth and about a yard or two. Man, can you believe if you're Haynes, can you... You have to look at... Coach Trey Wolf from Early County let us know what he likes best about coaching. I think it's the teaching part. It's, it's, it's a combination of the teaching and, and, and taking a kid from when he don't have a clue what to do and getting him to the point where he can play and seeing kids mature and progress. And uh, I think that's my favorite part of it. Fourth and a yard. If you're Haynes and you're the young quarterback here, can you imagine what the conversation is between he and Coach McWhorter over there. I'm sure this is not a position he expected to be in today. Not at all, but Haynes, a big 6'4 junior, so he's been around, he's been in the system now for a couple of years, probably hasn't, or maybe hasn't played under these intense conditions here in the Dome, but he's been in the system now for a number of years, and I'm sure is very familiar with what it was that, or what it is that Charlton County does. Fourth and one. Key down with three minutes and 20 seconds left. Gives and Walker or Bolden it is across the left side. First down yardage. Somebody lost to shoot. Bolden on the carry. Plus at this point the change in quarterback what you probably lose. And here's the here's a replay nice handoff there by Haynes and a nice continuation on the run there by Bolden. But what I was going to say is you bring in Haynes, and I'm sure Haynes, as I said, has been in this system. They've gone primarily to keeping the ball on the ground, so Haynes is probably not going to be asked to throw the football. And Dasher back in the ball game at quarterback. So Haynes goes out, Dasher comes back in. Two tight ends, unbalanced line gives to the first man through. That's Lemuel Walker, who... Gets it down to the 22 or the 23. Gain of about a yard, second down and nine. It's pretty much either been 31 or 13 carrying that football. They've kind of gone away from what we saw in the first half, those slingshot dasher passes. Haven't seen much of uh, that at all in the second half. Rich McWhorter has called timeout here. Coming up later tonight, 
in the game after this one. The Roswell Hornets at 12 and 1 and the Tift County Blue Devils out of Region 15A. They'll meet in the 6 o'clock game coming up. Then at 9, Peachtree Ridge Lions, one of the first number four seeds to make it to the Dome. They will meet the Warner Robins Demons. Nine and four out of region 15A as well. Two good matchups tonight in class 5A. We've had a dandy today, and we just certainly didn't expect this kind of football game, but this has been a great one, Dave. Tommy, you and I did the double-A game yesterday. Didn't get what we thought we were going to get, and the situation is exactly the same today. Didn't get what we expected. Dasher brings him up. Eye formation, two tight ends. Just going to try to power the football. Going to give it to Bolden and to Walker and pound it inside down to the 19. It's going to be third and about six. The clock is the enemy of early right now. It is, you see it right there, 2.37 to go. Charlton County inside the red zone. Early has just called their last time out. This is a key down for them, the next two. This is four down territory. You know Charlton's going to go for the first down here. Who knows? You know, we, we've, we've kind of speculated on a lot of things. So These are two teams it's tough to speculate with to begin yeah, with. It is. 237 left in the game. We can't speculate on this. It's been a close football game and will remain a close football game. A very good football game. Charlton leading 7-6 to six here. Charlton has two timeouts left. Early has used their last. Third and six. Dasher brings them up. I formation, two tight ends. Early up there in... A 6-3. The give is to Walker. Touchdown. Got a good block. Wow. Right at the point of attack. Did you see the speed take off the minute he that he grabbed that football in the handoff? And My you, goodness. Yeah, you talking about a counter right up the middle. He really, we got a good block up front. I hope we got a good shot of that. Watch out quickly. There's the handoff and boom, a huge hole right up the middle. Look at those legs churning right there. He's in the end zone and a split second's time. And Charlton's up 13 to 6. You think Dasher's going to kick an extra point here with that bad ankle? Going to find out. The See? old swinging gate, as they call it. Lines are down, and Early jumps offside. That's a movement. Yep, sure did. Looked like Robert, Robert Worlds jumped offside. So here comes your two-point attempt here. Generally, when you get half the distance to the goal. Approach on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, try for point. They'll go for the two here. Down at the one and a half yard line. I just don't think you can go wrong either way. Whether you go for the two or go for the one, it's already, you've already got the seven point lead. Yeah, there you go. I mean, no, no matter what you do here, two or one, it becomes a two possession game. There you go. And the extra point, the two point conversion is good so Charlton goes up 15 to 6. Did you see that levitation? Yes I did. Wow what a great leap. Lemuel Walker has really dominated the last four minutes of this ball game. Seven plays 41 yards 157. Can't say enough about the guys up front. Boy they really just the last half of this quarter have really done job for Charlton. Look at how high he gets. Well, actually, this is the touchdown right here. The speed that Walker takes it into the end zone. And, you know, he was our featured player. Here he is right here on the two-pointer. Boom, right up over the defender there and into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And that does make a difference in the ballgame. 
indefinitely. 15 to 6, Charlton County over early. 231 left in this one. Well, Walker was kind of quiet throughout that first half. You go back to the Buford game, he was also quiet, but really seemed to turn things up in the fourth quarter. It's been an exact repeat in this game here with 2.31 to go. Walker and Bolden have done most, if not all, of the damage here against Early County defensively with those alternating carries. And on defense, you can't say enough about the Charlton County defense, how they have risen to the occasion with a couple of Fumble recoveries and also the interception as the kick goes out of bounds. Well, that interception that gave Charlton County this last possession really, as you said, may have been the key play in the ball game. Could have been, or the fumble re return for the touchdown really changed the momentum of the ball game. I felt like when the Davis kid picked up the fumble and ran it in, that changed the complexion of the football game there. Early's whole demeanor changed after that. First and 10, Early County at the 35. Two and a half minutes left. No timeouts for Early County. And you've got Charlton County playing now with a center fielder back around midfield. Taylor rolling, looking to throw. Got a man out there and complete. Down at about the 36 at 37. Are you kidding me? Well, Tommy, he didn't give me time to say, but with you know with the clock situation, Early County has no other choice. They've got to throw the ball downfield. They need a quick score so they could potentially get a, a next a second possession. And they're working in a situation with no timeouts. Man, talk about a nice throw and a nice catch. Nico Wimberly with the catch. Taylor throwing incomplete. Intended for Wimberley once again. Well, had to throw that under pressure. Jack West Nightingale, the linebacker, came up, pressured him, made him throw that, I think, a little bit earlier than he would have liked. Second down and 10. Early County down at the 38-yard line, 37-yard line. I tell you what, they're trying to come back down the field. This one may not be over with totally here. Taylor rolling the throw. Got a man out there. Almost intercepted again. Had two receivers out there, as a matter of fact. Looking for Henderson over in the corner. And I think it was 27, Harry Gibbs, the corner that almost almost came up with a big interception. And Stovall also one of the receivers out there. 2-0-4. Charlton leading 15-6. What a great double-A semifinal game we've seen today, Dave. This has been super, and it's not over yet. Two wides, left and right, single setback. Taylor looking to throw, got a man out there. Ouch. There is Mr. Donnelly again. D.J. Donnelly has turned it up a notch here in the second half. Well, he has. He's had some bone-crushing hits as well, and that was one of them right there. Kind of an exclamation point with that hit. Fourth and 13. Look at this. Nice pass, he turned around and hello. Taylor. Looking, looking, now going to turn it up and get the first down and step out of bounds. Oh, heads up play that time by Taylor. Couldn't find an open receiver. And uh, once, once he crossed, had to keep it. And wisely picked up the first down. Kind of tiptoed along the sideline there. And picked up the first down, also stopped the clock at 128. Down at about the 27 yard line. A couple of pump fakes. Just walks a tightrope down the sideline. And once he had the enough for the first down, just kind of went out of bounds and stopped the clock. Good burst of speed there by Taylor. Bobcats coming back down, knocking on the door again at the 28 yard line. Taylor rolling left under some pressure, throwing incomplete down at about the 16. He threw the football falling down and still almost hit the receiver cutting across the middle. He intended receiver that time Henderson. You see some Trump County going to come and put the pressure and was able to get rid of the football. Almost a nice catch by Henderson just couldn't couldn't lead in far enough and dive far enough to be able to make the catch. Two wides to the left, two wides to the right, still the same set all day long for early. 
Taylor. Getting pressure from two areas, looking and throwing. Now got a man out there at about the 20-yard line. Nico Wimberly on the catch. I don't think he got out of bounds. He didn't. The clock continues to run. They've been going without a huddle all day, so this is nothing new. Yeah, this is this is not strange territory for them, is it? Taylor, four wide outs. Looking, throwing, intercepted in the end zone and brought back out by Charlton. And that'll do it right there. Ralph Bolden on the interception. Taylor tried to get it into the end zone down there. Had a couple of receivers there. Bolden stepped in front. And the early county run ends. But man, what a great game we have had here. Look at that here. You can see it under pressure. Had to throw the ball into coverage, and there was Bolden. Went right up, snagged that ball out of the air, and another turnover. You know, turnovers here in the second half, although there haven't been that many of them. They've been key and have come at key times, and they've hurt Early County, and Trump County's taken advantage of them. Pass was intended for John M. Henderson. Intercepted. In the end zone, now Charlton early with no timeouts. They'll just take a knee and run the clock out here. They'll have to run one more play. So next week you've got a humdinger, Charlton County in Dublin. That's going to be a dandy. That's going to be a dandy. Both teams play good defense. Both teams are loaded with speed on offense. You know, Charlton County went 10-0 in the regular season. That was the first time they've done that in school history with the win today, 14-0. 14-0. Great year. Early will end at 11-3. And, and a very good year for them for a second-place team from the Region 1 AA. Good football game. Not the kind we expected, but still a very good one. Final score in Charlton County. The two-time state champions in double-A going to make a run at number three. 15 to six, your final score. Charlton County over early in the double-A semifinals. Well, like you said, wasn't the game we expected. The defensive units really played outstanding today. And for Charlton County, their featured back, Lemuel Walker, really rose to the occasion in the fourth quarter. Let's go down to the sidelines and Lisa Weeks. Lisa. Joining me now is Coach McWhorter, and congratulations on another win at the Dome. How excited and proud of these boys are you? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it's great to win, and, and uh, but, you know, we came in here kind of expecting to win. That's kind of been our attitude all year long. But, you know, we're still not real happy with the way we played. And with one more game left uh, next week, you know, we're, if we don't play better than this, uh, I think uh, Dublin's going to break some more records. Uh, and, you know, maybe maybe a state championship record because we ought to play a lot better than we did uh, in this game to even have a prayer next week. So uh, if our guys don't play better next week, we'll get blown out. Well, congratulations. Good luck against Dublin in the state championship, AA state championship next week. Thank you. Tom, back to you. Thank you. A great one, folks. It's in the history books at the Dome. Charlton, 15. Early County, 16. DVD or VHS copies of today's game can be ordered for $19.99 plus $4 shipping and handling from GameTapes.com. Don't miss live coverage of the Georgia High School State Football Championships next Friday and Saturday evening, beginning at 7.30, exclusively on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. The Georgia Student Finance Commission. Now students can plan, apply, and pay for colleges in Georgia on one website. GACollege411.org American Soundtrack presents Doo-Wop's Best on PBS. Monday at 10.30 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. 
Support for today's programming is provided in part by the following. Ten yard line, five and Records are made to be broken, and it's time to set the record straight about unions. I'm Gene O'Kelly, newly elected business manager of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 613. IBEW 613 has not had a work stoppage in over 80 years serving Georgia business. Our bonded workers are well trained and drug free. We're committed to high quality work done on time and on budget. IBEW 613 is a good investment for your job because we're putting families to work in Georgia. This is Georgia Public Broadcast, your PBS station. It's been a great one. Charlton County wins it by a score of 15 to 6. And yet another semifinal in the record books, Dave. What a great game. Well, it turned out to be a great game. There you see the scores in Class A. We saw Dublin hammer love it yesterday, 65 to 7. And Charlton County with a 15 to 6 win over Early County here today. Lemuel Walker really stepped up. Bolden stepped up in the second half for Charlton County. More football coming up next. For Dave Cohen, this is Tommy Palmer. Thanks. We'll see you later. Bye now. Funding for this broadcast of the 2006 Georgia High School Association's football semifinals has been provided in part by Georgia Electric Membership Corporation. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW Local 613, Atlanta. Wachovia. The Georgia Student Finance Commission. By viewers like you. And the Georgia High School Association, who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge Dealers, State Farm, and Verizon Wireless for their support of high school sports programming on GPB. For 45 years, GPB has been committed to serving you. And we want to thank you for inviting us into your homes. With award-winning GPB original productions. Programs that reveal Georgia's fascinating wildlife. And travel Georgia's back roads in search of interesting people and places. Programs that celebrate the arts in Georgia. And take you on behind-the-scenes adventures. Or provide live statewide coverage of high school sports competition. Programs that go back in time to reveal Georgia's role in history. And bring you insightful reports on everything from politics politics to arts across the state of Georgia. So remember, GPB is here for you. Thank you for making us a part of your life.